It is a series of individual efforts and of memorable moments. Ten years ago this week, Anthony Davis stunned Notre Dame with a second half kickoff return. Notre Dame had gone into the half leading 24 to 6, but when dusk had fallen, so had the Irish 55 to 24. So many memorable moments. It is said that players come to Southern Cal and Notre Dame to do great things, to play in great games. Another chapter in the storied history of this series will be written. Will the star be Notre Dame's explosive tailback Alan Pinkett or quarterback Steve Burline? Will history write of Southern Cal linebackers Del Rio and Pickett or perhaps freshman tailback Ryan Knight will step forward center stage? 60 minutes of football and then history will judge the outcome and mark its series heroes forever. It's the 56th meeting between the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame and the Trojans of Southern California, live from the Coliseum in Los Angeles. CBS Sports presents College Football. Live from the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum in Los Angeles, California, it's the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame versus the USC Trojans. Today's game is sponsored by Chevrolet, who invites you to see, drive, and live today's Chevrolet. Mr. Goodwrench and General Motors Park. And by GMAC, the financing people from General Motors. It's a rivalry that began in 1926 and today. From the Los Angeles Coliseum, it's played for the 56th time, Notre Dame and USC. And while the Irish lead this series, USC has won five of the last six, 11 of the last 14. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender. How does this game affect these two teams? While USC has won the conference title and they're headed to the Rose Bowl, they lost the city championship to UCLA last week. So they consider this a big, big game to get their momentum back for that New Year's Day date against Ohio State in the Rose Bowl. On the other hand, Notre Dame needs a win today. If they win, they'll head to the island, to Hawaii, to play in the Aloha Bowl. And Notre Dame football. These young men hope to wake up the echoes of past glory. The Irish of Notre Dame. A man under pressure, Jerry Faust. The win today would give him the best regular season record in his four years at South Bend. game winning streak for the Irish and now here come the Trojans of USC they expect the crowd 80,000 plus for this one and Ted Toner the Pac-10 coach of the year Pat, I think the big question for USC is which Tim Green are we going to see? The one at quarterback that led them to victory over Washington or the one that threw three interceptions against UCLA? Well, if it's the one we saw against UCLA, he may not play too long. His coaches have sat him down this week and said to Tim, he has to emotionally remove himself from the game, get started slowly. Now, Notre Dame knows he's an emotional quarterback, and they plan to come after him early. They want to blitz the linebackers, disrupt his rhythm. USC is really with another captain today, Pat Cusick, who was given that honor because of his outstanding special teams play. Well, can Tim Gray play under control? We'll know after we return. Our cameraman Ken Wu overlooking the Coliseum, and it is raining, and the weather has continued to deteriorate as we approach the kickoff of this game. 53 degrees. 
can see the forecast is not good for showers. Well, both teams really win running the football, so I'm not sure the rain is going to be a major factor. Getting ready to kick off is Steve Jordan, the all-time field goal kicker in Southern California. He has 15. He's been outstanding for Ted Toner. And back deep, Timmy Brown, 81, and Alonzo Jefferson, number three. Last year, Notre Dame won at South Bend, 27 to 6. But they haven't won here since 66. This rivalry continues. The 56 meeting between these two intersectional teams. And Jordan will approach the football. It's going to be the freshman Brown. And Timmy Brown comes out to the 25-yard line. Notre Dame will set it up there. Marcus Cotton making the tackle. Let's set now offensively the Fighting Irish. Steve Berline coming off his best game ever, 276 yards passing. That went over Penn State. Mark Brooks, a power runner, a bruiser, a fullback. Alan Pinkett, he had 189 yards last week. And Joe Howard, he's the basketball player as well as football player. And Tim Brown, outstanding athlete. Mark Bavaro, a very courageous tight end, playing on a knee that's giving him some difficulty. Berline intended for Pinkett. And Pat, already the weather might be affecting the game as that one went right through his hands. The offensive line for Notre Dame is big, as is USC. Mike Perino is a two-year starter for the Irish. Larry Williams, a preseason All-American, had a lot of injury problems. Mike Kelly also was a preseason All-American pick. Tim Scannell, well, he got the game ball last week for Penn State's game. And Ron Plants, the starting place of Tom Durger, who has an injury. And Berline, you can see the 17 interceptions. He wants to cut down on those. Second and 10 from the 25. Looks like it's starting to rain even harder. Brown in motion, he tips to Pinkett. He'll get a yard, and that's all. It'll be third down and nine. Neil Hope, the man we talked about earlier, was over there to make the stop. Defensively now, they've carried him all year. Here's the Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Year, Dwayne Bickett. Brian Luft has played very well the last two weeks. Tony Colorado also an all-conference selection. Brent Moore playing with an injured neck. He has a pinched nerve. Jack Del Rio, All-American this week from the Walter Camp selection. And on a third and nine, the Irish have it at the 26. steps up. He's hit as he delivered the ball and is almost picked off by Bickett. Bickett claims he has it, but the officials say otherwise. Fourth down. Gary, USC's defensive game plan is to force Steve Burline to beat them throwing the football. Here it is a third and eight situation. He had three wide receivers in the game. He gets a little bit of pressure. Is able to step up. But there's Dwayne Bickett, number 80. He has tremendous reach. He is 6'5", and that's one of the reasons he's been named the Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Year, because he has such tremendous... I just got almost got hit by a pigeon up here in the boot. Well, he remembers your days <laughs> here at USC. Mike Barracola now will be punting for Notre Dame. He's going to get a nice roll inside the 35-yard line. It'll be down there. They'll mark the ball at the 32. USC has the ball for the first time after a 42-yard punt. And the man of a real focus today is Tim Green. How will he play? He has been up and down an emotional elevator. Kennedy Pola, he celebrated his birthday Thursday. Fred Crutcher will play. We were concerned he'd even see action today. And Timmy Ware, the deep threat. And Hank Norman's been very consistent for this team. And Mark Boyer, an all Pac-10 academic selection. From the 32, Tim Green with his first snap. Cormier goes in motion. Here comes Crutcher. Crutcher to the 35-yard line. Rick DiBernardo and Mike Kovaleski make the stop. A gain of three, second and seven. The offensive line of USC, I don't think there's any better in college football. Fitzpatrick, vastly improved. An honorable mention, all Pac-10 pick. Jeff Riegel, he's got a chore ahead of him. He's got a black Mike Gann. Tom Cox, very quick at center. Tom Halleck, he's the vocal guy up front. And here's an all Pac-10 selection, Ken Rutger. Ted Toner winning the selection this week of the Pac-10 Coach of the Year. Here is Crutcher on a second down and seven. Advancing close to the 40-yard line. Kovaleski, the leading tackler for the Irish, there again on the stop. Let's talk about that Notre D defense. It's very young, seven sophomores. Here's one of them, Robert Banks, has outstanding physical ability. Mike Gann, he's their best defensive player. Mike Griffin, he's a street fighter at that nose guard spot. And Wally Klein, he's only six foot eight. 
And Mike Golick has had some problems with the shoulder, but he's a fine linebacker. Third down three. Jerry Faust. Last year, winning in South Bend, he's one and two against USC. Tim Green back on third and three, and he has the first down throw completed to Fred Crutcher to the 45-yard line, a gain of five. Gary, this is the USC offense that we saw versus Washington two weeks ago, and this is what Ted Tona wanted to do was get back to pound at you, pound at you, throw short little high percentage passes to your backs and to your tight ends. Again, last week against UCLA, uh, USC came out and threw the ball downfield all over the place, were unsuccessful on first down. Today, we're gonna, you're going to see them pounding the football at them, and a very good here in the first half, generally the first quarter against their opposition. We'll give Green some confidence to complete that first pass. Army A goes in motion, first down, just short to the 45, here comes Crutcher again. The guy they call four yards ready, went a lot further on that one, he went eight yards. Mike Larkin made the stop, second down and two. Well, it is a compliment when you say four yards, Freddy, because that is the nature of this offense, this USC offense. It is not a big offense, it is a four-yard offense. And here's Fred Crutcher turning four yards into eight and nine. Now they're in a situation, Gary, second and two. This is the situation that USC can really beat opponents on. Crutcher was 80% thirsty. He couldn't even walk Sunday and Monday with a groin pull. Shows you the courage of this young man, the junior. He's an all-pack 10 performer, over 1,000 yards for the year. Green back to throw. Overthrown, intended for Kennedy Pola, 37, the fullback. So they went for more than the two yards, and it brings up a third down. Let's look now at the rest of the Fighting Irish defense. Mike Kovaleski, the sophomore, their leading tackler. Larkin, boy, they're glad to have him back. He's been out six weeks with a knee injury. Mike Haywood has two block kicks this year. Pat Vallage, he's always around the ball. Vastly improved from a year ago. And here's the enforcer, Joe Johnson. He'll come after you. And I want the Francisco. He was a running back a year ago. Third and two. And there's some problems with the exchange. And Notre Dame has the football. Can 78 coming up with it for Notre Dame. There was an exchange problem between Tom Cox, the center, and Tim Green, the center. It looks like the, the ball just never came up for Green. They were going to run their pitch play, but here's the kind of start that USC had last week against UCLA. Remember those turnovers, those five turnovers last week really cost USC the game. The ball was never uh, handled by Green there, and there's the Notre Dame defense to make a big turnover recovery. Those five turnovers last week led to 16 points against USC. First down now the Irish have it their own 49 yard line here comes Mark Brooks and there goes Mark Brooks the other direction he might have gotten a yard and that's all excellent reaction by Colorado Colorado's played so well number 92 and also Dwayne Pickett Pickett is 6'5 he's 235 pounds there's what we were talking about 16 points last week and then the other loss to right. LSU they're not the kind of team that can turn the ball over and come from behind as we saw last week USC is the type of team that has to hang in there with and win in the fourth quarter. However, the USC coaches feel they're shocked back into reality now. They come back to earth after that big win against Washington. On a second down and nine, here comes Pinkett. Pinkett, short of the 35, it'll be a first down. Tim McDonald, number six, made the stop. A 15-yard run by Alan Pinkett. Alan Pinkett is so quick, and he's kind of small. He's only 5'8". Sometimes he's difficult to see, but there was a big hole there on the right side of the line, Larry Williams and Mike Perino, and he's very tough to bring down. Take a look at the middle of that USC defense. Mike Co Tony Colorado, number 92. He's against 54 Scannell. Right there is a big block on him. He creeps through the hole. A big seam there for Alan Pinkett to jump through. Kind of hides behind that offensive line. On a first down, Burline overthrown. Tyler defending on the play. Timmy Brown, 81, the intended receiver. That's an interesting point about Pinkett, Pat, is that he is so small, and a big offensive line, he uses that to advantage. I really think that is an advantage. The linebackers have difficulty seeing behind that. We saw it with Mark Harrison earlier in the year uh, in the same situation from Wisconsin to hide behind his big offensive line. Very difficult to see him. Second down, coming up, 10 yards to go. Live from the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum on a rainy day here in Southern California, Alan Pinkett with the football bounces to the 30-yard line. The gain of six yards, Jack Del Rio, the All-American, and Del Rio is hot. 
He is unhappy. He made All-American, Pat, but he didn't make the first team on the Pac-10 selection. Well, I think because Dwayne Bickett has received so much attention this past year and Neil Holt, the other linebacker, that has probably taken away from some of the consideration in the Pac-10. But it is kind of strange to make one on an All-American team and then you don't make the Pac-10 team. The Pac-10 has an awful lot of good linebackers as we have seen this year. Well, a lot of good linebackers, not only in this conference. It's the year of the linebackers in the whole country. Third down now, four yards to go. Just short of the 30. No score, early going. Burline 0 for 3 in passing. On target this time to Brown. And Brown will have a first down to the 22, a pickup of 8. Tackled by Jerome Tyler. And Brown, they just can't say enough about him. Well, he is their fastest receiver and very, very quick and very dangerous after he catches the ball. The key there, obviously, was very good protection for Burline. Allowed him to find Timmy Brown, who did the smart thing and not tried to break the long run and picked up the first down. Watch the line play of this Notre Dame team. They want to get to Steve Burline and try to hurry some of his throws. But look at the excellent protection there by the offensive line of Notre Dame. That's great stuff. On a first down from the 22, Pinkett inside the 20. To the 18 yard line a gain of four second and six pinkett and rex moore 35 a freshman redshirt made the stop we saw a graphic a little earlier in the game how usc has been a big first quarter team generally scored before their opponents in the first quarter here notre dame is threatening again we've mentioned a couple of times this season how usc is not a very good catch-up team second down and six pinkett those four straight 100-yard days, 189 yards last week against Penn State. Here he goes, and he stumbles this time. Check that. That's Brooks who stumbled. Looks like he tripped right over Steve Berline's foot. That's a loss of two on the play. Back to the 20-yard line. Ted Toner, we've had the opportunity the last three weeks to visit with him. He's been very gracious, but he's very open, very honest about how he feels about his team, the emotion problems they had a week ago. And this week, he says, we have gone back to the business. He said he's a much better head coach this year than he was last year. I guess he just grow into that job. Third down now. Eight yards to go. Boy, it is really raining now, the hardest of the day. Give to Pinkett. And Pinkett will be stopped after a two-yard pickup. Neil Hope was there, number 54. There is a penalty flag, however. The flag has been thrown. Very late with the flag. USC is indicating it's against Notre Dame, and it's going to be holding against the Irish. Well, this is a tough call here. If you don't accept the penalty, it's fourth down. But if you accept it, you, give them, you take away 10 more yards, and potentially, if you stop them, make a very long field goal attempt. Well, the field goal kicking for Notre Dame and Jerry Faust has been excellent. John Carney's missed only two. He's 15 of 17 this year, his longest from 47 yards away. And so USC thinking that's going to take the penalty. That'll move it out to the 29-yard line. Holding, offense, still third down. It is a tough decision, though, isn't it? Whether you want to take the football or... There's Larry Thompson, the referee, and the crew that will work with him today. Notre Dame will have Milt Jackson and Timmy Brown as the wideouts on a third and 17. in the backfield. Perline intercepted by Dave Perling. Perling, number 95, picks that one up, and the Trojans have it. The second turnover here in the first quarter on, in bad weather conditions. Steve Berline is just trying to get his team back in field goal position by dumping the ball off to Mark Brooks, his fullback. But Dave Perling read the play, read the screen, got his big paw, he's 6'5", got his big paw up in the air, deflected it, and then got a little a lucky break because the ball bounced straight up, and Perling was able to make the interception right there. He the is, excuse me, Pat, he's playing because Brent Moore has that bad neck, and he comes in and makes a big play in the early going. Fred Crutcher on a first down run. Doesn't pick up anything. It'll be second down and 10. So an early coaching decision by Ted Toner to accept that 10-yard penalty is well, turns out to be a very good one at this stage of the game. It's going to be second down 10 from the 48. You know, another thing with the rain coming down as hard as it is now, Gary, if you're going to throw the ball, sometimes it's better to throw it early before the field gets too sloppy. And this field is uh, very suspect at best. Crutcher in the backfield behind Tim Green. He gives to Crutcher. Crutcher drops. 
excellent play by Wally Klein, number 96, the sophomore at six foot eight. We have an upset, we understand, in the Southwest Conference for a report. Here's Pat O'Brien. That's right, Gary. Texas has just been upended by Baylor 24 to 10. That means that TCU in the Southwest Conference has the inside track to the Cotton Bowl, but they are losing 14 to nothing in the second quarter. If AM holds on, Houston would have the inside track. It's all tied up there at Texas Tech. Let's go back to Gary and Pat. Okay, Pat, thank you. It's third down 11 here now for USC. Six and a half minutes left in the first quarter. No score. Green scrambling. He'll make it to the 47 of Notre Dame. Mike Kovaleski over there to make the stop. A pickup of six on the play. Also, Mike Larkin assisting on the tackle. So it's going to be fourth down. And coming into punt, well, it could be one of two guys, either Troy Richardson or Paul Green. It's going to be Richardson, number 99. It's almost the flip of the coin by Ted Tolner as to which guy he's going to try to survive. Well, notice, too, that Notre Dame has two punt returners back. Troy Richardson, on the pass, has been able to bounce the ball, get a big roll. He did that in the Washington game a couple of weeks ago. Richardson hits this one not very high. He gets the roll, which is characteristic of his punting. And it's going to bounce just short of the 10. Notre Dame will have it. No score at the 538 mark. The human hand. Blatt's Challenge on TV. Now we challenge you again. Compare our new popular price Blatt's LA low alcohol beer against these brands. Blatt's LA has half the alcohol, half the calories of our regular beer. Anheuser-Busch LA, 110 calories. Miller Lite, 96 calories. Blatt's LA, only 73 calories. We challenge you to compare the quality, compare the calories, compare the price. It continues to rain here, and interestingly enough, the man that had his best passing day ever in this series played on a similar type weather day, Joe Theismann, and look what he did. I was in the stands on that day, and boy, he tore him up. And then Paul McDonald had the best day for USC in 1979, 311 yards as they bested the Irish. It was amazing, amazing really watching Joe Theismann that day pass over 500 yards in really a driving rainstorm like this today. I don't know if it's possible, but I think it's raining even harder right now. From the 11-yard line, Notre Dame will have it. Brooks and Pinkett in the backfield. Here comes Alan Pinkett out to the 14. And that'll be Keith Bigger, 17, making the stop. Pat, you made a point a while ago on the fair catch. How many times have we watched Troy Richardson get a punt, bounce, and get additional yardage? You're right. And Notre Dame has to know that from watching films of USC's special team. So Notre Dame's really going to have to move their two safeties up and make sure they fair catch that ball and save perhaps 10 or 12-yard roll. Gain of three on that last play. Second down, seven. Brooks, the fullback to the 19-yard line. Let's go down now to Steve Davis. Are you all right down there, Steve, with all that rain? I don't know. Notre Dame came out a little early for this weather. They came out on Wednesday, and when they came out, Jerry Faust gave them this little packet. It says the game is on, and it's a series of articles from a pictorial of Notre Dame football from 1964. That's when most of these players were born, and just tries to wake up the echoes one more time. You guys are great up there to have that nice, comfortable, warm booth. Let's go back upstairs. Uh, I think Pat brought this weather from Miami. <laughs> out to the 20-yard line on a third and two. It's going to be close to the first down. That was Alan Pinkett. Luff and Hope jammed it up. And it looks as though they are a little bit short. Daryl Hopper, the defensive back from USC, just went limping out of the game. And we haven't seen much of that eight-man front yet here in the first quarter that we expected to see. Artie Gigantino, the defensive coordinator for USC, said we must stop Alan Pinkett. We're going to use an eight-man front to do so but we haven't seen it yet. Daryl Hopper, as you mentioned, goes off the field. Dwayne Jackson has replaced him, and there is the indication they are short. It'll be fourth down. And Barracola will be punting in less than ideal weather conditions to be inside his own 10-yard line. 
They do not feel, USC does not feel they get blocked a punt against Notre Dame. They're concerned about the fact that the Irish fake so many. And they have blocked two, USC has blocked two punts this year, but this is not the right part of the field in the circumstances to even attempt one. Back deep. Tommy Haynes, usually Hopper is back there, but Hopper, as you mentioned, is hurt. So Haynes will go back and field his punt. Vericola gets very good hang time. He's been averaging over 40 yards a punt. Oh, big rush. Did I say they're not going to block one? <laughs> well, it goes that strategy yeah, out the window. right on again, didn't we? <laughs> Look at the roll he's getting, though. Colorado almost blocked it. The ball rolls dead at the 32, a 47-yard punt. No score from the Coliseum. This used to be the only way to get a close professional shave. But now there's the new Schick Total Touch. It's so revolutionary, it promises you that same professional closeness or your money back. Its entire screen is a unique shaving surface, not just the top. Shaves at any angle in any position, making it really effective in those hard-to-get nooks and crannies. This Schick Total Touch is so revolutionary, you may even want to use it at home. New Schick Total Touch. There's never been a shaver like it. If you want to do work like an expert, it helps to have the mind of a craftsman. Sears Craftsman electronic power tools are so advanced, they practically think for themselves. Their microprocessor memories and electronic sensors give you more precision, more control. And right now, these three are on sale for just $69.99 each, only at Sears. There's more for your Monday, every cop's nightmare... Don't make me shoot. ...becomes a haunting reality. Cagney, you killed somebody! Police brutality or self-defense? Cagney and Lacey. Tony Colorado, he's been tough in this department. Well, this was not a designed punt block, I don't think, Gary. Tony Colorado, who has blocked two punts this year, came three, and then he decided he was going to try to get it. But last week, he roughed the punter. This week, he, he took the right angle so that he did not, did not rough the punter of Ericola. Well, he did block two punts earlier this year. After a very fine roll, sets it up at the 32 of the Trojans. Tim Green to Crutcher. And Crutcher out to the 39-yard line. Robert Banks, 56, made the stop. Gain of seven will be second down and three. And next Saturday, one of the outstanding traditions in college football, Army against Navy from Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. This has been a good year for the academies, Army, Navy, as well as Air Force. Boy, Army rolled up 633 yards of offense in one game this year. And Navy, boy, they played Notre Dame tough a few weeks ago. Scared them. It had to be a field goal that beat them in the last seconds. Second and three, first down run. Kennedy Pola, very courageous player for this USC team. He's playing with some bad legs. You see Fred Crutcher uh, running off the field now. He is a man who was limping just a moment ago after a K, uh, carry. We talked about Kennedy Pola, number 37, the fullback. They, he is their change of pace. What USC wants out of their fullback position, oh, it's probably 40 or 50 yards in the game. It's a surprise move. It gives their tailback a rest. And Pola's the kind of strong physical back that can give you those 40 and 50 yards during the course of a game. He's had surgery on both knees. He's had problems with cramps, but he comes back to answer the bell every week. There's a catch by Polo at two grabs last week. And that will be a first down inside the 45-yard line. 16-yard pickup. An update on South Carolina. Here is Pat O'Brien. All right, Gary. South Carolina came back from a 21-3 deficit with this Mike Holt touchdown. Now the Gamecocks missed the first point after a flag. They got a second chance. They kicked it again to win and hand Clemson their first home loss since 1970. Let's go back out to Southern Cal. So South Carolina finishes 10 and one. First down just inside the 45 yard line. Green to Ryan Knight to freshman. Ryan Knight inside the 40. He had 100 yards last week on 25 carries. Kovaleski and Banks making the stop. A gain of six, second and four. Here you ask at the top of the show what Tim Green and what USC offense we're going to see this week. Well, the answer so far in the first quarter is the offense we saw two weeks ago. They're running the ball on first down. They're picking up four, five, six yards on first down. And really, that is the personality of this football team. That's what they need to be successful today in the Rose Bowl. A different team with Ryan Knight. He doesn't hit in there as quickly as Crutcher. He might give you the big play. Second down, he has a first down to the 30. 
Kovaleski eventually catches up with him. A nine-yard pickup, man. He looks very quick on that play. Maybe the most heralded high school player of a year ago. 501 yards in one game he rushed. He's from Riverside, California. Here is USC's fabled pitch play. They're sweet. They're student body right and right. And Brian Knight has followed a lot of tailbacks. The history of the USC tailbacks who have run this play very well. They're expecting great things from Ryan Knight. There he followed an excellent block by James Fitzpatrick, his offensive tackle, and found a way to pick up a first down. Six first downs for USC, all on the ground. Here's Ryan Knight. Boyd's the first man, but still dropped for a loss. Joe Johnson, 27 on the tackle. Student body right. That was a play that had Hayden executed so very well. Well, the real key block here is the block of the tight end on the defensive end. Now, if he can hold that block there, it allows the fullback now to come around and make the next most important block on the strong safety. Then we saw Ryan Knight just take the pitch from Tim Green. He's going to read the block of fullback Kennedy Pola on the strong safety. He can break either outside or inside at the I formation. You never threw an interception on that play, did you? I, I pitched with the best, best of them, Gary. Second down, 11. Green in some difficulty. Try to hit Cormier, the tight end, and it'll bring up a third down in 11. Cormier was a second-team All-Pac-10 pick. He is six foot six, playing that tight end spot. Joe Cormier, watch him in motion, number 85. USC puts him in motion an awful lot. He is their second tight end. Again, they're just trying to gain an advantage, try to change the support coverage by Notre Dame. Good coverage there by number one, Mike Haywood. The ball's a little inside. as a slippery ball, couldn't hang on to it. Crutcher has come back into the football game on a third and 11. Important here for Tim Green not to take a sack or make a bad play because they're in range for Steve Jordan for the field goal. Green back with time and intended for Timmy Ware. That was Haywood, Mike Haywood, number one, defending on the play. And it brings up a fourth down. Very nice coverage by Mike Haywood and a pretty good throw by Tim Green. Remember, you're working with a slick ball as we watch Timmy Ware, number 19, come in motion. He's going to drive down, down and needs 11 yards to pick up a first down. Haywood has a nice little cushion, but is able to drive on the ball. And because the ball is so wet, Tim Green can't get a lot of oomph on it. And so it, it floated on him a little bit. And now they're going to try a field goal. From 47 yards away is Steve Jordan. All-time leading field goal kicker, and that ball wobbles. It was partially blocked. It goes into the end zone. And Steve Jordan with the bad weather conditions and the rush not able to hit it from 47 yards away. It looked like his footing was very treacherous. Well, you're, you're right. And he has to be concerned about this weather. The ball is very, very heavy. Heavy. There's the Notre Dame rush. They felt they could block an extra pointer field goal there today. It was tipped. And we've got an even ball game. Nothing, nothing. Our score from the Coliseum. I think you can see Pat Hayden's house from here. But we have a traditional rivalry unfolding, and Pat, field position, mistakes, turnovers, could be big as this weather continues to be a problem. And this is the guy that got a piece of that last field goal attempt. And blocked extra points and field goals like that. Mike Griffin, he's 6'5", he got a big paw up there to knock the ball down. Chris Smith is now in at fullback. A single set running back behind Steve Berline from the 30. Notre Dame gives off to Chris Smith senior out of Cincinnati. Colorado and Hope make the tackle. A gain of two. Second side of the field and you have four quick receivers on the line of scrimmage. Second down and eight. Again it's Smith behind Burline. Brown split out along with Milt Jackson. And the whistle just about the time the ball was ready to be snapped. We have a flag on the play. We have a story about wigwagging. To develop that, let's go to Steve Davis. Wigwagging, that's what you do. We signal the plays out on the field. I'm sure Pat Hayden did that. Notre Dame has quit that system because they felt like people were picking up their plays. And so the system they're doing is sending plays in when they're on offense. Pat Hayden, did you get plays waggled to you, or did you just know what to call? Hey, Steve, we only had one play. That was student body right. I didn't have to worry about it. <laughs> we'll develop that a little further in just a moment. Let's wait on this call here on the penalty. Offside uh, against Notre Dame and Bavaro, the tight end. What I started to say is Notre Dame thought for a while that maybe one of the guys in the chain gang or somebody on the sideline maybe was picking those up and relaying them to the opponent. Got to be careful. After the penalty, 
Erline getting off to Allen Pinkett. On a second down and 14, Neil Hope and Brian Luff made the stop, and we have come through this first quarter of play, and no one is on the scoreboard. USC against Notre Dame will return after this commercial break and a word from your local station. Yards. This game really is going to come down to turnovers, which each team has won. Perhaps a block punt, a field goal toward the end of the game, and penalties. Those are the things that are going to make the difference today. Fourth down, and Veracola will punt from the 11-yard line. Tommy Haynes goes back and looks like they might be coming after him. Let's see. He hit it extremely well under the conditions, and from the 31 is Tommy Haynes. And he gets a yard, and that's all. Good reaction that time by Brian Beamer, who was a tight end down on the special teams. A 43-yard punt. Well, not a lot of games today, but some very important games. And BYU looks like they're going to finish unbeaten, and this is the shocker. Well, that really is a surprise. And as you saw, South Carolina coming from behind in Death Valley, no less. I remember that one yesterday, two oh. outstanding college quarterbacks. That game was a whole lot of fun. One of the all-time games. Oh, I tell you what. Doug Flutie's something else, isn't he? He wrote the script, didn't he? We have a penalty, by the way. Ball penalty. In fact, we have a personal foul. Let's see. USC is backing up, going against them. Well, these are one of the things that are going to be so important today. Penalties like this, and particularly under these circumstances, USC, I think it was a personal foul. It's a big penalty. Well, isn't it ironic? Here we are today. Let's listen first here. We have something that might be interesting to you, especially the people back in South Bend. Dead ball, personal foul, receiver. First down. Okay, the people in South Bend must be laughing because in South Bend, Indiana, the weather is better than it is here in Los Angeles. <laughs> Sunny and 61 in South Bend. The travel agents will love that. We were there earlier in the week. It was snowing in South Bend. What happened? The bad weather follows you around, Gary. No, you brought it from Miami. Remember that. First and 25 for USC. That penalty really did hurt. Here's Crutcher trying to get some of it back. Out to the 21-yard line. Gain of three. And a long ways to go now on second down coming up. Cedric Figaro, number 48, making the stop. This offensive line, Pat, USC through the years has had the mystique about the offensive line. And one thing that Notre Dame said about him is that when they hit you, they knock you down and they like to gore you. Well, generally, they overwhelm their opponents, but Notre Dame has so much size in the defensive front, they can't do that to Notre Dame. At least they have a jet. Here is Green and some problems. He gets rid of the ball. Very fine catch by Kennedy Pola. And Pola scrambles out to the 26 yard line. Pola, who had his birthday Thursday, and the reason that it's so significant, his first name is Kennedy, and he was named after the president who was assassinated the day he was born. We saw Timmy Green clapping his hands. That's the kind of composure they want from Tim Green, and Tim Green really does make a very good play here because excellent pursuit there by Wally Klein, number 96. He avoided the sack and allowed Kennedy Pola to catch the ball, and although it wasn't a big gain, he did avoid it, what, a 10-yard sack. Third and 18 now. Four in that last play. From the 25 yard line, and Notre Dame moving, and they may have been drawn off. They were looking at Mark Boyer and Ken Rutgers, the right side of that offensive line. And this is some of the problem with Timmy Green there. It looked like one of the offensive linemen turned to Tim and pointed at Tim Green and said, That was your snap count. They are the maturity of this team. Ted Tolner says that is off. Three yards to go on third down. They have to make it all the way out to the 43. And now they have the ball at the 20. Crutcher and Pole in the backfield. Green setting up. It's on target to Hank Norman. He way short of the first down, but he got some of it back out to the 30-yard line. Ballage making the tackle along. Here is the punt by Troy Richardson. It's going to get another bounce, and that's a patented bounce. Troy Richardson has that down to an art form. All the way inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. 42-yard punt, 15 yards on the roll. Goal on a punt. 
15 yards the last time. Pat, you just can't reinforce enough how they got to get somebody up to fair catch. Well, Notre Dame, as I said, have watched the punter, Tr Richardson, the past two weeks. They know he gets a lot of roll on the ball, so they're going to have to re put, move their punt return men up so they can fair catch the ball. On the 28-yard line, the Irish have the ball. No score. The weather getting worse and worse as Chris Smith carries the ball. Dean at two. Colorado making the stop. I suppose, Pat, as this game gets worse weather-wise, you get more and more conservative. Play selection on first down. You see Notre Dame's run the ball five, five times and passed it twice. See USC, again, that's the kind of game they wanted to play. Run the ball, establish the run, pick up four and five yards. And again, the weather conditions warrant running the ball on first down. Back in at eight. Here's Pinkett. Pinkett for a gain of one. Dwayne Pickett, number 80, over to make the tackle. Alan Pinkett had 122 yards against USC last year and threw a pass for 59 yards. He has 30 yards on nine carries. There's Rick Lance, the defensive line coach for Notre Dame, a former Georgia Tech man. Last week, Mike Gann, the outstanding defensive tackle, gave him the game ball that went over Penn State. Third down. Seven yards to go, and Burline has it go off the hands of Joe Howard, number 24. It's a shame the weather conditions are like this because this pass is more weather conditions really than defense or a poor throw by Steve Burline because he gets ex excellent protection. He has Joe uh, Howard wide open, but the ball just takes off on him, and that's going to happen in these circumstances when you have a wet, heavy ball. Burline is one of seven now for eight yards. He's thrown the one interception. And Barracola will punt. Tommy Haynes goes back for the Trojans. Very fine punt. Excellent punt. At the 25-yard line is Haynes. Out to the 33. USC will set it up there. A 44-yard punt. A 9-yard return. No score. 11.05 left in the first half. We were showing you the outstanding passing performances in this series. Let's look now at the rushing job. Look at Vegas Ferguson, 185 yards and 79. Two touchdowns as the Irish lost to USC in that one. And then Charlie White, what a day he had. 261 yards for the Trojans. 44 carries in that game. And USC won that one. Charlie White's a little bit like Fred Crutcher, kind of an aggressive four and five yard ball carrier. Tim Green, and you can see the rain has not stopped. USC coming away the better for 13 yards on the last exchange of punts. Green pass intended the 50-yard line by Hank Norman. Pat Ballage, 40, defending on the play. Norman just shaking his head, and you know that weather's got to affect him. Here's a good look at Pat Ballage. We saw him last year when Notre Dame played Miami, and Bernie Kosar picked on Pat Ballage, but he spent his whole offseason really getting himself mentally prepared and physically prepared, and people have not been able to pick on Ballage this year. He's had a very good year with three interceptions for the Fighting Irish. Well, he came back 12 pounds lighter and rededicated himself. Pueblo, Colorado. That was the first time in this game that USC has thrown on first down. Trying to break some tendencies here. Cormier in motion. Green up to Crutcher. Crutcher to the 39-yard line. Six-yard pickup. Crutcher last week became the 16th ball carrier in USC history to go over 1,000 yards in a year. Good block by the Uf USC offensive line, particularly on the linebackers. You can see number 36, Juan, uh, Ron Weisenhofer, get blocked right there. Two guys, see Tom Cox, number 62, blocking first, and then another Trojan line. They really keep him from coming over and trying to help on the tackle. Third down, four yards to go. Cormier goes in motion once again. Green, with some real pressure, delivers on target. Mark Boyer, the tight end, caught it, and that'll be a first down at the 46, a 15-yard completion. Well, apparently, Gary, the talk that his coach had with Tim Green has done him some good because he does look so much more composed here today. Here he gets a pretty good rush by the Fighting Irish, steps outside, and is able to drill the ball to Boyer. And in particular, that's a very difficult throw in this kind of condition. But he does, then he look, Tim Green looked much oh. better, much more calm today than he did a week ago. Well, they put the clamps on him. He stirred up UCLA a week ago. He said he was going to whoop them. And so this year <laughs> and this week, up, they said, it? you're not going to say a word, and he hasn't. On a 
First down, catch the 15 yard pickup. We have a penalty flag, and that'll blow that play dead. I want to apologize for some of the problems we're having here with the pictures as our camera been working so hard just to stay dry right now as the weather continues to deteriorate. Timmy Green, we talked about how effective he has been, and Mark Larkin talked about how they want to stop him today in this traditional rivalry. I think Green is uh, doesn't like to get hit too much, especially you know, on, you know, on passing situations. So we're going to try to do a little dogging and um, get our linebackers up there to hit him, you know, just as he's throwing the ball and getting his face and, and causing some frustration, and maybe we're hoping you know, he'll throw the ball away a little bit. Thus far, that has not affected number 11. The penalty now makes it first and 15, illegal procedure. Paul Green, 45 now in, replacing Cormier at tight end. There he is, and he dropped it. Green, a freshman out of Fresno, has played fullback. He's played tight end, and he has been a putter for the Trojans, and that time could not hang on. Here's a good look at Tony Colorado and number 95, Dave Perlin. He's the man who made the interception, batted the ball down. Colorado, we mentioned, made the all Pac-10 team as well as the academic all Pac-10 team. Pat, I'm interested in all the years you played here. Did you have this kind of weather? Not when I was in college, but I was with the pros, with the Rams. We played the Minnesota Vikings in a playoff game here, and it was, believe it or not, it was about twice this bad. That is hard to believe. Second down, 15. Green again in motion. Roger across the 50 to the 47, and a helmet goes flying through the air. Well, the Cougars of BYU, the only unbeaten team in college football. Let's get an update from Pat O'Brien. All right, Gary, Robbie Bosco gets his 33rd touchdown pass now. He finds wide open Mark Bellini. It puts daylight into this game. It's 24 to 10 now. And by the way, our par Stegen will take a look at the BYU passing machine at halftime. Let's go back out to Gary and Pat. This man knows all about BYU. He was the offensive coordinator there. Had Jim McMahon as his quarterback. It's going to be third down and 12 now for USC from the 48-yard line of Notre Dame. No score. 9.24 left in the first half. Green stepping up. Completes to Norman. Hank Norman inside the 30. First down to the 29. Iwata Francisco makes the tackle. A 19-yard pickup. This, this is a big play. You're not going to see too many long runs and long throws because of the circumstance. So watch Hank Norman, number 83, right there in the middle of your screen. It's a zone defense by Notre Dame. They're just going to drop back, keep everything in front of them. The ball is well thrown over the middle. Norman's a big target. He's 6'4". Allows him to go up and use his body on a wet ball and make a big catch. First down just inside the 30. Here's Ryan Knight leading his way inside the 25 to the 21. Bill Johnson, Mike Haywood combined on the stop. A gain of eight on the play. Second and two. Let's go back to Steve Davis. The weather conditions are really getting worse as the game goes on. And John Carney, the Notre Dame kicker, is trying to do anything he can to keep his feet as dry as possible. There are the towels on his feet. It is horrible down here, guys, and the field's not getting any better. No, oh, you can have it. This turf has been suspect anyway. They've had all kinds of problems with it, and it's tearing up with the weather like it is. Second down and two. Cormier back in the ball game in motion. Pitch to Ryan Knight, and Knight has the first down. He's to the 18-yard line. Robert Banks made the tackle. Timmy Green now goes sprinting over to get a new towel. He's keep himself dry. Yell something over the coaches, and he'll return to the huddle. I'm not sure a towel is going to do it. It's going to do it, Gary. But you mentioned the turf, and here is an interesting part of the field. Right now, if USC were to ha have to attempt a field goal from this part of the field, that's where the field is the worst. It's the sandiest out there. It's important for USC to, if they're going to kick a field goal and they don't get the ball in the end zone, to gain a few, few, few more yards to give Steve Jordan a little better field position. They're almost playing on sand entirely between the hash marks. We'll talk about why the field is in this position. Here's Green and giving off to Ryan Knight, and he's going to lose a couple. Loss of a yard. What happened to this turf was the closing ceremonies at the Olympics tore it up. 
Then they elected to seed rather than sod. And after the NFL started playing here early, the grass never did take hold, and it's been a losing battle ever since. Seed rather than sod. I'm <laughs> Explain that one to me. Seed rather than sod. Well, okay. you pour a little seed on the field. Right. I'm an old farmer. Or you take these big chunks of grass, I and see, you okay. plant it. Thank you. There's the look at the Boy, that you, sod on there. I don't that know. Seed. I, you guys that grow up on the beach, I don't know. Second <laughs> down, 12 yards to go. Cormier in motion. Jimmy Green on target. Pola to the five. Pola to the three. First and goal. 17 yard completion, and he threw a bullet. A nice game plan by Ted Toner, Norval Turner, their offensive uh, coordinator. T uh, Kennedy Polo, number 37, the fullback. Now, he has not really been featured much in the passing game. We caught a couple of passes last week that were successful, so they wanted to incorporate him more in the passing attack. He's got very good hands for a fullback. There he made his, what, a second or third catch today, brought them and put USC down inside the five-yard line. Ted Toner says he has courage. He's the leader by example, and they've gone to him in the passing route, and we have right now a timeout by the Trojans from the three-yard line. Six minutes, 52 seconds left in this scoreless game in the first half. It continues to rain. The towel's very evident as they try to keep this football dry, and on this particular drive, Tim Green has done very well. He's three of four for 51 yards. The 11th play of this drive, starting from the 33 of USC. Ryan Knight. Touchdown. down of the year. The Trojans with a 6 to nothing lead. Steve Jordan, the point after, coming up. 67-yard drive that time by USC. Jordan adds the point after. When you play against Notre Dame and you're a freshman, that's a biggest, big thrill in itself, Gary. But when you score your first touchdown against Notre Dame, it's also a big thrill. Here's Ryan Knight, the freshman. Southern Cal, he follows his block by his fullback, Kennedy Pola. Good eyes and vision kind of fights his way down to about the half-yard line, then bull bullies his way into the end zone. Watch number 37, Kennedy Pola. He's had a lot to do with this drive. We saw him catch a couple of passes. Now watch him put a block right there on the defensive back and allows Ryan Knight to slip into the end zone. We've got a 7 nothing ball game Southern Cal. Tim Green did such a good job and Ryan Knight you mentioned how excited he's got to be to be playing in the series as a freshman and scoring that touchdown. It really is a thrill. It's a tremendous rivalry and it really means something when you play well against Notre Dame. Jordan will kick off Brown and Jefferson back deep. 647 left in this first half. short coming up on the fly is Timmy Brown and the freshman from Dallas will get it out close to the 25 yard line well today at 6 o'clock Eastern officially they'll announce the bowls and here's what you'll have on CBS from El Paso the Sun Bowl on Saturday December 22nd that'll be followed by the Peach Bowl on New Year's Eve and then from the Cotton Bowl the 49th Classic from Dallas, Big D. And uh, don't you think maybe Doug Flutie and BC will be there? There's a reasonably good chance that Doug Flutie will be there. <laughs> the Haas James Brock will have a heart attack if he isn't. Here is Burline throwing the ball. I'm not sure to whom or to what player because it looked like it might have been deflected. Brooks, the intended receiver, and Burline now, Pat, is one of eight for the game. Well, you saw we talked about uh, USC's defensive game plan was to have Steve Berline beat them. They wanted to take away Alan Pinkett, keep him from gaining 100 y yards. Steve Berline is off to a slow start. A lot of it, I believe, is really the weather conditions because I think USC has under underestimated Steve Berline. Well, we have seen great improvement in watching films. You can see thus far Berline off to a shaky start, but last week he had 267 yards passing. Green 
he's gotten off to that smooth start that we said it was so important for him. Here's Burline. That'll be a second completion. Milt Jackson on the receiving end, and he struggles close to the first down. Dwayne Jackson playing a place of the injured Daryl Hopper over to make the tackle. Let's go, See if they got the first down. Let's go, he is out to the 34-yard line. Let's go, Very nice composure there by Steve Verline. He was trying to find his tight end, Bavero, first, and then came off of him into a secondary receiver, Jackson. It is a first down. The officials working under some trying conditions, too. They were trying to see the far sideline to see if they had to measure. They did not, and it's a first down at the 34. That completion by Verline, his second now out of nine offerings. He has Howard and Brown split out. Play action over the middle. Bavaro, the tight end. First down to the 46-yard line. Pickup of 20 yards on the play. It was the same play they ran earlier. Remember I mentioned Burline was trying to hit Bavaro on the play before. He's going to slip right by number Dwayne Bickett, number 80, right there. There's Bavaro, 82. And that's Burline's first read. Now, if he is not open, then he's going to throw the ball out to Milt Jackson like he did a play earlier. This time, again, Burline makes a very nice read, gets the ball to Bavaro, who's been really their best receiver thus far this year. 31 catches for him, and the water's starting to stand on the field now. In between the hash marks, Burline in trouble. That's the first sack of the game. Brian and left 90 over the top of it. Notre Dame's game plan here in these kind of circumstances is trying to throw the ball short because it's pretty tough to get the ball downfield. We saw them hit the tight end and then we saw Mill Jackson. He's trying to get the ball out to Howard that time, but he was well covered. You saw Luff come in from behind to make the sack. Second down, 11, a loss of a yard. You see the last four games, the biggest reason is Pickett has really come on. I think his highest game was 76 yards rushing the first six games. There's a play action by Burline, and he threw it too low. Intended for Bavaro. Bavaro is a courageous man. He injured his knee severely. Many people thought he wouldn't even be back. He was back in a matter of days and playing very well. Ron Hudson, their offensive coordinator, says that he's really been our most valuable player on offense this year because he's so important to their attack, both as a receiver and a blocker, because they run the same type of running plays that Southern Cal does with the run-the-pitch play and their bat blast play, and the tight ends block are very, very critical. Bavaro coming out of there. They think Bavaro's the best blocking tight end in Notre Dame since Dave Casper. Third down and 11 as Jackson comes in for Bavaro. Notre Dame one of six now on third down. Burline, pressure from behind. Milt Jackson to the 40, 35, to the 20, 15, and out of bounds at the 10. Dwayne Jackson made the tackle. 37 yards on the play. receivers are very good after they catch the ball. We mentioned about Timmy Brown. Now you're going to see Milk Jackson. But the interesting thing is here, Milk Jackson is going to pick up a terrific block by Alan Pinkett, number 20. There's Pinkett right there in the middle of the screen. Now watch the block that Pinkett gets Jackson right there. It allows Jackson to get to the outside, pick up the first down. That's good teamwork. Pinkett can beat you in a lot of different ways. We talked about the punishment that quarterbacks take. There's Jack Del Rio, number 52, hitting Burline after he threw the ball. A line of scrimmage just outside the 10-yard line after that 37-yard completion. Shoveled forward to Timmy Brown. Brown with the speed to the five. And he's in for the touchdown, his first. Timmy Brown in the next four years. Carney to attempt the point after to tie it up. He does. It's all even. 5.07 to go in this first half. Really a sensational call by Notre Dame because they're going to take advantage of Timmy Brown's 
ability. Watch 54, Neil Hope get blocked there by 35 Brooks. It's a little shovel pass. He's got tremendous speed and gets to the outside. We talked about Ryan Knight scoring his first touchdown, how important it was for him. Now we look at Timmy Brown, another freshman, the freshman from Notre Dame, who they hope will score many more touchdowns against Southern Cal. But it makes you think about, oh, Paul Seymour and Jack Snow, some of the great receivers that Notre Dame has had. They think Timmy Brown can be better than all of them. Has the pat on that drive. He was four of five for 78. Kind of what Green had just done previous to that. Like a Bernie Kozar and Doug Footy. Seven all. And uh, obviously, the sun is not shining here in sunny Southern California. They fit for ducks. <laughs> Beautiful day yesterday, if you want to know. <laughs> had a nice time in Miami, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Tell you what, uh, from coast to coast, you've had it follow you, haven't you? You think uh, Doug Flutie has an angel on his shoulder or what? <laughs> that was a Hollywood script written for the Miami BC game. Carney will kick off now. 5.07 left to go in this first half. Two back to back drives, one by USC, now one by Notre Dame. After really kind of just a field position battle up to that point. Carney. Kind of a knuckleball effect. And back there in the end zone, and he's going to get on it. That's Albert Watts, number 22. It's the impetus of the ball that makes the difference on a play like this, if you're wondering why he didn't have to bring it out. But if you touch it, it doesn't really matter. It's the emphasis. You're right. And Albert Watts did the smart thing. After he went right through his legs, he wouldn't make a very good shortstop, would he? But it did touch him and went in the end zone. The ball. But we're going to take a look. He said, I said, went right between his legs. There he is. He plays shortstop for the Dodgers in the offseason. There he is. Goes in the end zone. And then he puts his knee down, which is a smart play there. I tell you what, he won't be playing shortstop for the Trojans. <laughs> From the 20 yard line now, Todd Steele has come in at fullback, number 21. He's been sidelined the last two weeks with a bad ankle. Here comes Crutcher. And Crutcher, a gain of three. It'll be second and seven. Well, tomorrow, a doubleheader on CBS. Eagles will try to play the spoiler when they meet the St. Louis Cardinals. That's always a good game, and the Cardinals have got to win if they want to stay in the hunt for a playoff berth. And then on the feature doubleheader, the 49ers put their five game winning streak on the line against the Saints. The Saints pulled out a big one Monday night. These and other regional games. Be sure now to check those in your local area. Yeah, they want you to come over. And <laughs> did you have any turkey <laughs> left over? Are you kidding? With my appetite? <laughs> you and Las Vita put it away, I'm sure. Second down now. And six yards to go. Steele carrying the ball. Did the ball get loose? It did get loose. We mentioned Steele hasn't played, and that could affect your timing. Wally Klein, 96, was there, but it's still the Trojans' ball. It'll be third down and a yard to go. Troy Wilson has now come in at cornerback, replacing Mike Haywood for the Irish. They were really weak depth-wise at fullback with this guy, Steele, out of the lineup. Actually had only Polo that could play the fullback spot. They used their backup punter, Paul Green, in fullback for a while last week. Third and one for Green and company. Here is Crutcher. First down and more. Well, you never know that Crutcher was doubtful for this game. That's a seven-yard pickup. That's a really a characteristic run of number 49. And a characteristic call of Southern Cal. It's the pitch play into the boundary, the short side of the field, where he picks up a nice block from Tom Halleck, his strong guard, and followed Steele, his fullback, for the first down. You know, we are talking about Crutcher, Pat, the fact that uh, he's set so many standards for himself, 16th to go over 1,000 yards. He's eighth in USC rushing, and four of those guys are Heisman Trophy winners. Of it. I think the more amazing thing is 10 guys behind him were All-Americans. You can't play that position, I don't think, if you're an All-American. Green scrambling out, complete to Mark Boyer, and Boyer slides to a very, very close to the first down. Looks like he's going to be a yard short. It'll be a nine-yard pickup on the play. Teams are doing a very good job of throwing the ball on first down, and they're doing a good job because they're throwing high percentage passes. Here you're going to see Tim Green just dump the ball to Mark Boyer, his tight end. The other wide receiver, Hank Norman, had cleared out an area for him and allowed Boyer just to come underneath him and watch Ken Rutgers, number 77, top of your screen, do a little blocking there on number 96, Wally Klein, that allowed Green to get to the outside and make the throw. Crutcher on a second down and a yard, picks up the first down to the 49-yard line. Mike Larkin, 42, making the stop. Neil Hope, the senior, 
He has the Rose Bowl to look ahead to. He remembers all too well that loss last year in South Bend when the Irish came out in those green jerseys. His last game against Notre Dame, his last game here in the Coliseum, very big moment for him. The underrated one of those guys at that linebacking spot. Here comes Crutcher on a first down across the 50. Fumble, the ball is loose. It's been picked up by Di Bernardo, number 43 of Notre Dame. Rick Di Bernardo, the junior from California, from Garden Grove. Second turnover by USC. USC had five turnovers last week, which was the difference in the ball game today under these circumstances. The tailback is just going to have to hang on to the ball a little bit more. You can see Fred Crutcher, number 49, come into the screen. A very good hit there by Joe Johnson, number 27. The ball popped up. There's Rick DiBernardo, number 43, with a host of people in front of him. A big play by the Irish defense. That sets it up at the 44. Berline wasting no time. Mafaro checked that. Ricky Gray, 88, the tight end, has a first down catch at the 26 and 18 yard pickup. Nice call by the Fighting Irish there. They come right back after a turnover, come up with a big play to their tight end, their backup tight end, Ricky Gray, number 88. Again, stretch the defense with the formation. They line their tight end up out of the flanker position way out in the field. He's a mismatch because he's so much larger than the defensive back for Southern Cal. Gray out of DeMampa High School in the Washington, D.C. area. Straight up the middle, Allen Pinkett. Pinkett has another first down. This one at the 14. McDonald and Tyler combining on the tackle. 12-yard pickup on the play. USC really had the momentum here in the first quarter, but right now, Notre Dame, the momentum is in their quarter. Uh, quarter. Watch the momentum and the power of Alan Pinkett, number 20, as he bursts through the tackle of number 80, Dwayne Beckett. He's got those big, strong legs where he can run through a lot of arm tackles. It's one of his real keys to his running style. First down inside the 15, Pinkett again behind that line to the five, Pinkett to the three. It'll be a first and goal for Notre Dame. 11-yard pickup on the play. Tyler made the tackle. I'm surprised at USC's defense. Remember, Artie Gigantino's defensive coordinator said he was going to play a lot of eight-man fronts against, against Pickett. And what's Neil Hope, number 54, as he kind of weaves his way through traffic? Mark Brooks, number 35, makes another fine block. The Notre Dame fullback, Gary, really has done an outstanding job, not only today, but really all season of blocking opponents and giving Allen Pickett some room to run. We're talking about Brooks and Chris Smith. First and goal now. In motion goes Smith. Give to Pickett. Touchdown. who's been breaking record after record at Notre Dame, just broke another one. He broke the record of Red Salmon, 250 points. He played in 1900 to 1903, and that touchdown moved him ahead of Red Salmon. And a mishandled snap. Veracola tries to salvage it. Who's got it? USC. Well, that could be a very big extra point there, or missed extra point. Never did get the ball down, the snap. Let's see if we can pick up whether it was a bad snap or whether he just couldn't hang on to the football. The ball was just not handled by the holder there, who's that Mike Viracola, the punter. The ball comes right out. There's John Carney, the kicker. And he gives you a little Gero your premium shot. <laughs> Pulls the ball up. And I'll tell you, this is all you can do, though, is put the ball in the end zone. And just hope something good's going to happen. Let's take a look at the touchdown run there a, a moment ago by Alan Pinkett. A tremendous surge, but really, remember this drive as we watch Pinkett was set up by the big couple of big Pinkett runs, the big turnover by the Notre Dame defense, the interception by Di Bernardo. Watch the power of Alan Pinkett. A small back with got tremendous power in his leg. Gets a nice block there by Larry Williams, number 75. Pinkett slips in right in behind him. 42 touchdowns for Alan Pinkett. He's got another year left, too, doesn't he? Yes, he does. And if they continue on here, he'll have another game left. 
last week against U.S. Carline has played well after going one for eight. Then he started to turn things around. He now for the game is six of 14, 104 yards. A beleaguered man who needs this win to continue on to the Aloha Bowl. If he'd win today, it would be the most wins he's ever posted in the regular season of play. He played much better this year in November, his team has. Boy, they were disastrous in the two previous years, not winning at all in the month of November. They're trying to go 3-0 this year. Carney checking off. Fielded short. And down there, all kinds of difficulty. Greg Howitt, number 46, is the guy who eventually came up with it. We're talking about Jerry Faust and uh, the difficulty he has had. And look at the close games he's been involved in. Seven points or less. But they've won some games this year. Remember, they survived a field goal against Missouri. They beat Navy with a field goal with seconds left. The team is healthy now, healthier than it's been all season long. And that was reflected in the big win over Penn State last week. There is a penalty flag on the field. That's what Coach Faust is a little upset about. personal foul kicking team first down that really changes the field position instead of being clear inside the 20 brings it out now to the 29 yard line that's the second personal foul we've had in this game 127 left in the first half that's steel 21 and crutcher behind tim green 13 to 7 notre dame with the lead crutcher straight ahead moves that pile out to the 34 well, this is quite a rivalry here, but next week, another one. Army, Navy, 85th time, the long gray line. Perhaps the best game in two decades between the academies. It's going to be fun. Lindsey Nelson will be doing that game with you, Pat. And speaking of Lindsey, at halftime, he's going to talk about uh, some great games. What, the 1946 Army-Navy game? Prelude to next week's game. Had a great goal line stand in that game. I'm sure you remember it well. <laughs> it's your inside and outside. I remember that. <laughs> Second and five. Green on the scramble. Throws it back. It's complete. Hank Norman comes up with a catch. Should call a timeout. He should call a timeout. 12-yard completion of first down. USC has two timeouts left. And uh, right now they're replacing the ball. Right. It was a first down, so he does not need to call the timeout. There's 33 seconds remain here. So now the clock is rolling. Now they're going to, I believe, call timeout. Here is the second timeout by U.S. Three this yeah. year, but these weather conditions, and remember that field conditions are so sandy as well and sloppy. Where a Norman split out, 30 seconds left in this first half. Green, it's wobbling and incomplete. Haywood defending on the play. Mike Haywood defending on Hank Norman. Take an isolated look. The on-rushing lineman with 25 seconds. It's second down 10. Intended for Cormier. Over there. Needs to get out of bounds. And did he make it? Oh, the official <laughs> just knocked down. Joe it's Johnson, really we have a penalty flag thrown. 11 seconds showing on the clock. He's short of the first down by some three to four yards. Is that roughing the official? <laughs> Green tried to uh, dive out of there, and let's let's sort this one out. Another personal foul. Oh I'll tell you what, that is a big, big play. It's going to give him 15. Number one, who's made some fine defensive plays here today, but he's going to come in late here. You can't really tell from that angle. Well, that is two of those on this drive. Remember, they started this whole series with a 15-yard personal foul. Tim Green, a little shake and bake there on that play. USC has one timeout remaining. They try to field goal from here. It'd be about 50 yards away, and that's going to be short. Eight seconds left now. Norman, the intended receiver. Well, he had Hank Norman wide open, but Timmy Green threw this ball low, and generally he does throw the ball low, and if you're a quarterback, that's not a bad thing to do because... The ball is not going to go off receiver's hands, and in this kind of weather, it's not going to sail on you and get intercepted. However, he did have Hank Norman open there that would have put them in a position for an easy field goal. Well, they're going to try one more play and then possibly bring Jordan in. It would be an awfully long kick under these conditions. Green, sideline, oh, a 
set, picked off almost by Francisco, and he might have gone all the way. Now they will go for the field goal. The Notre Dame defense knows that Timmy Green has a clock problem, and any pass he throws, he's going to throw to the outside. Now watch Francisco, number 33, read Tim Green the whole way. That's an excellent ball reaction by Francisco. Read the quarterback's eyes, knew he was going to throw the ball to the outside. Had the ball been thrown poorly, it would have been picked off for a score. This will be a 51-yard attempt with that time remaining. He's kicked 153 yards this year. And it is no good. 51 yards away, and we have come to the end of this first half of play. Kicking into the wind, wet conditions, and Notre Dame at halftime leads it 13 to 7. We'll return after this commercial break, and a word from your local station. Aaron Albert Watts go back for USC. And you can see the water down between the hash marks. Yards away, and we have come to the end of this first half of play. Kicking into the wind, wet conditions, and Notre Dame at halftime leads it 13 to 7. We'll return after this commercial break and a word from your local station. Aaron Albert Watts go back for USC. And you can see the water down between the hash marks. They're up to their shoe tops in water now. Here is Carney kicking off. Randy Tanner, the freshman, bounces out to the 15, to the 20, excellent return out to the 30-yard line. Randy Tanner hit by Mike Haywood, that's a 30-yard kickoff return, and he had to slot through the center of that field to get there. Well, there's the stats, as we mentioned, not a lot of yards in the first half. Well, the key again for USC is two turnovers, and their other two losses, and two, their only two losses this year, turnovers have been the major factor. And the quarterback comparisons, too. Both of these quarterbacks, actually, Gary, have thrown the ball very well under the circumstances, under the weather conditions. Well, they started out slowly, but came on strong. Well, Steve Berline started one of eight, but he finished five of six. And there you saw his total yard, six of 14. And Timmy Green's had some nice throws as well. We have a man shaken up. It's Mike Haywood for Notre Dame. Hola, Crutcher. In the backfield, Cormier goes in motion. Here comes Crutcher, and Crutcher goes nowhere. The 30-yard line hit down in a hurry, and that's Mike Gann, who they think will be drafted on the first round this year by the NFL. Gary, defensively in this type of ball game, you can begin to clamp down your defense. You know a quarterback generally is not going to be able to beat you with some deep passes. And take a look at the Notre Dame defense clamping down on the first play of the second half. They're going to play a little bit tougher on the line of scrimmage. There's Mike Gann, who's had an outstanding year, 10 sacks, and he's had eight tackles for losses. That's his ninth. But you can play a little bit more tough, tougher on the run. Second down, 10 from the 30-yard line. Mishandled, snap, the ball is loose, and Notre Dame has recovered. Three turnovers against USC. That's Wally Klein. Klein with a fumble recovery. And the second time, Tim Green has had exchange problems with the center, Tom Cox. Under these kind of circumstances, when it's this wet, a quarterback really has to stay underneath the center just a little bit longer to make sure he secures the snap from center. But that's twice he's had problems, problems with that. Last week, USC with five turnovers, already with three. Very alertly, Klein got on it. Brooks make it in the backfield, the line of scrimmage, the 30-yard line. Alan Pinkett with 56 yards in the first half. Adds to that total to the 25. Figures made the stop, a pickup of four. It'll be second down and six. Pinkett, there is Klein who recovered the fumble. Pinkett, we asked the coaches what they thought was his best asset, and they said he has great character. Wally Klein, by the way, his cousin is Joe Klein, who played on the Olympic basketball team, playing in Arkansas. come in at a linebacking spot. Burline wants to throw, and he had to get rid of that one. And that ball is backwards. They need to get on it. That's exactly right. It was a lateral. That ball was a live ball. It was anybody's football. Brian Luff was the guy that hit Burline. Let's reconstruct it. 
Steve Verline is just trying to make a nice little safe throw under circumstances, and we saw him hit his tight end before. Now he's got a secondary receiver, but the ball is thrown behind him, and there, there you can see it. It is a backward pass is the official name for it, but the ball is live. I think it reacted late to the ball did kick it out and there was a big loss there by the fighting irish that's a loss of 12 you can see tommy haynes on the sideline trying to yell to get his teammates over there there's burline gets the picket picket trying to get to the 30 he's there and then drop at the 28 yard line tim mcdonald number six the strong safety and dwayne pickett over to make the tackle Still going to be eight yards to go. Give Allen Pickett some credit here because he is still showing outstanding speed. He's a plotter as well in this kind of field conditions. He gets to the outside, breaks a couple of tackles, and finally brought down, but really put his team in a position to attempt at least a field goal. Fourth down, eight yards to go. Carney will attempt one from 45 yards out. Right down into that sand and water. Miracola to hold. And the kick is good. He got it. Well, I want to tell you, that's a terrific concentration by John Carney because Veracola mishandled the snap again, Gary. Tremendous concentration by Carney. He's been hot. See, he had, to, he had to back up a little bit because the ball was mishandled by Viracola, the punter, the holder there. But Carney waited just an extra second, put the ball to the uprights, and that's the excitement of college football. And it's 16 to 7 in favor of Notre Dame. Give it. Nine points now that Notre Dame has picked up off of USC turnovers. In the two previous losses that USC has uh, had this year, the same thing happened. They gave up 16 points off turnovers last week, and against LSU, their other loss, they gave up 17 points after turnovers. Coming up on the fly is Randy Tanner again. Tanner is to the 20 and driven backwards. That is Hiawatha Francisco, number 33, who led that charge defensively. And so now Tim Green has to concern himself with getting the snap. Pat, you talked about staying under the center, but what else can you do to combat these weather conditions? Well, you need to talk to your center a little bit. You also can use his towels as much as possible. Not only put them on your center, but put them on your guards and tackles as well to try to keep your hands dry. You can change your own towels that all quarterbacks carry. But the biggest thing I think you have to do, every quarterback has to really just stay underneath the center just a little bit longer than he normally would. Leading to three points, so try it again. Just across the 20-yard line, here comes Crutcher, and he may get a yard, and that's all. Mike Gann, Crutcher in the backfield. Crutcher to the 25, 26. Gann is there again. Gann is 6'5", he weighs 260. It'll be third down now, four for the Trojans. You can see, though, how Notre Dame's defense has adjusted and played a little bit tighter. Even the defensive backs are up a little bit tighter because they don't feel under these circumstances Timmy Green can beat them deep on a long throw. The Trojans have not lost here in the Coliseum against Notre Dame since 1966, 18 years ago. And right now they trail 16 to 7. Third and four. On target, Norman with the catch. That'll be a first down. Norman made the catch at the 37-yard line. This is a very fine throw by Tim Green and a very good catch by Norman. Remember we said in the second half, at halftime, Gary, that you're going to run some cuts, run out cuts off the hash mark where you have a little bit of better footing there. It's a little bit better. There's a little bit more grass on the outside. And that's just what Hank Norman did. Timmy Green got away from the rush, picked up another nice block by Kennedy Pola. And Hank Norman broke off the best part of the field and made a big catch. Mike Haywood's come back in defensively for Notre Dame. A 10-yard completion on the play. And another mishandled snap. And I don't know who has this one. Let's wait. Notre Dame says they have it. Waiting for the official ruling. They're indicating the Irish have it. Four turnovers now. We heard Steve Davis 
us a little bit earlier talking about how Steve Verlein practices with wet football, taking the exchange from center. Here, that is just a wet football. There's nothing Tim Green can do there other than keep his hands closer together and get his body a little bit closer to a center. But that's what, the fourth turnover now, the third there for, on, just on exchanges. Larkin is shaking up, number 42. It was Gann that got on the ball. Gann in this second half has been all over the place. That sets it up now, just outside the 35. Lincoln, spinning around, he got a yard. Del Rio was there, along with Biggers. Looks like Tyler got some water and mud in his face. All kinds of problems playing down there. We've seen the Notre Dame defense create turnovers and use the weather really as an advantage. The Southern Cal defense, USC has relied on them all year long, this defense, and they're going to have to do the same. They're going to have to bow their necks, get an extra man around the ball, tighten up their defense, and, and force a few fumbles as well. The tradition, the rivalry, Notre Dame with the advantage 16-7. We're lying on the play action. to go out of bounds at the 30-yard line. He didn't pick up on anything on Smith. Think it in the backfield. Burline being chased. And he stumbled as he was getting ready to throw, and he goes down at the 29. Dwayne Pickett was over there. Howard was the receiver in the vicinity of the 10-yard line. I tell you, if you're a quarterback and you have to get chased by somebody, you always hope it's kind of the nose guard. And here you can look at Tony Colorado. He is 6'5", he's 250 pounds. This is frustrating for a guy. He looks like he's carrying a piano on his back there. He's trying to get after Berline. And he does put enough of pressure on him. Berline felt him all the way and allowed him really not to pull up and throw the football. Nice play by Colorado. And so a field goal attempt. Again, this will be another 45-yarder. Carney just hit one moments ago. He has a win to his back. Team's leading 19 to 7. He's a nice man. Happy for him. They've gone through some very difficult times at Notre Dame. Notre Dame, if they'd win, would be 7 and 4, headed to Hawaii. Not a bad place to be. I'm sure the weather's a little better yeah, there. I hope so. You promised me we'd always have good weather out here in Southern California. Yeah, my wife's stuck at home with four kids in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Carney, look at that ball, it just died. Didn't move. Just picked up. Elbert Watts will bring it out. He's out to the 25-yard line. Ryan Beamer made the stop. Well, it's 6 o'clock Eastern. The bids will go out for the Bulls. I don't think too many people will be surprised, but the Sun Bowl will announce that. That'll be on CBS. The Peach Bowl and the Cotton Bowl all coming up on CBS and... Uh, as we mentioned, uh, BC uh, has a better than average chance that they'll be there on New Year's Day. And the Southwest Conference uh, picture's really been clouded oh, today. The Texas. surprising loss by Texas. Baylor, Grant Taft's team, beating the Texas Longhorns. From the 22-yard line now, first down, Green giving to Crutcher, and he is pelted by Mike Griffin, number 94. Teeing off on him, and the problem now, Pat, is USC is not a good catch-up team. You're absolutely right. They're down 19-7 now. There's still plenty of time where they can stay with their game plan. But as we saw last week against UCLA, they're not a great catch-up team. They're a four and five-yard team and throwing high percentage passes. It's not a big play team. That's the time left to the third quarter. 19-7. Notre Dame has kicked two 45-yard field goals in the second half. Crutcher in the backfield. Second down and nine. Pressure by Gann. And it's caught by Boyer on the deflection. And that'll be a first down catch. Well, you need a break like that. <laughs> You're right. Sometimes you do need a little bit of luck. 12 yard pickup. There was an awful lot of pressure on Tim Green from the front defensive front from Notre Dame. He did actually throw this ball up for grabs, and I thought it was going to be intercepted. A play-action fake didn't really fool too many people. You see number 86, Boyer there. Good pressure there by the front there. 
The ball is caught a tip ball on Mike Border. For Janik, number 58 makes the tip. Jumps up, tips it. Didn't knock it down, actually popped it up. An unlucky tip, really, for Notre Dame. Pitch back to Crutcher to the short side of the field, and Crutcher flashes to the 40-yard line. Gann and Banks combine on the stop, a pick up a five. He made an interesting point running into the short side of the field. That's where the only solid turf is right now. It may make some sense for USC to run that pitch play again into the short side where they can have a little better footy. Crutcher with 65 yards. He's had four 100-yard days. He's been brilliant at times. He had 146 yards against Stanford, 171 against Washington State. Second and five from the 40. Here is Kennedy Pola and Pola, a power runner for the first down inside the 50 to the 48 yard line. Kovaleski made the stop, 12 yard pickup. It's not too often the USC fullback is such a major force. Today we have seen Kennedy Pola catch three passes and we've seen him run the ball up the middle. And after you've run Fred Crutcher at tailback five or six times in a row, in the, a row and the linebackers are concerned about Crutcher, boom, you give the ball to Kennedy Pola, he slips right back past your linebackers into the secondary. Maybe being born in American Samoa, he's used to this kind of weather because he's been a good mutter today. That's what's going to take. And you see the trouble that the defense and the offensive linemen are going to have as they try to maintain their block. First down, just about to the 48 at Notre Dame. Green to Crutcher, and he is clotheslined by Wally Klein. Klein played a very strong game for Notre Dame. Lots of three. USC once more trying to take advantage of the field there, though, Gary, right over to the short side. But you mentioned it. Wally Klein has had a magnificent game here. He just charges right through, almost takes Fred Crutcher's, Fred Crutcher's head right off. This is an interesting change in the defensive philosophy by Notre Dame. They've been much more aggressive this year. In the past, they've kind of played a red, a reed kind of defense. This year, they've been more aggressive. And you can see them shooting gaps here and putting more pressure on the USC offensive linemen. Klein came in here leading the Irish in tackles for loss with nine, and he just added another one. 7.28 to go, third quarter. Green to throw. Broken up. Double team job that time. Hiawatha Francisco was there first. Hank Norman, the intended receiver. Also Pat Ballard. Third and 13 now. The next running back is Francisco. You know, they changed him from running back because they didn't feel he got through the hole quickly enough. They felt he maybe danced in the hole a little bit too much, so they moved him to defensive back, and he's made a very nice adjustment. Well, they had too many wiggles back there for the running back spot, so they put him at safety, and he's done the job. Yeah. Green and broken up, picked up by Wally Klein. He thought he had the interception, but I don't think so. He's got a little mud in his eye, though, doesn't he? <laughs> look at that. <laughs> that tells you the story right there. That's the kind of day it is as you look at Wally Klein. Good defensive pressure by the front four there of Notre Dame. They really have been in the second half in Tim Green's face. It's a third and 13 situation. There you see Mike Griffin, the nose guard, actually jumped up and tipped the ball. Wally Klein tried to make the interception. So a punt will come up now. Troy Richardson will punt from the 35-yard line. Howard and Kusak back for Notre Dame. Hits this one very well. He'll let it hit, and it makes it into the end zone. 51-yard punt by Troy Richardson. That's the best we've seen him do as far as distance is concerned. At the 20, Notre Dame will have it, leading 19-7. 7.08 left to go in this third quarter. You look through the years of this series, one of the best scoring performances was turned in by Johnny Latner. 24 points in 1953 as the Irish won it 48-14. But then Larry Conjar, a fullback for the Irish, tied it in 65. And then for USC, is it any surprise that Anthony Davis might figure in the scoring? Six touchdowns that day in 1972. How many do you have in the whole series? 11? 11. Some schools don't do that in a series. That's right. They were introducing him here at halftime. He didn't run very fast no, in the field, did, did he? Uh, Notre Dame, even though they have scored six points in the second half, still don't have a first down. And Berline has one now. That was Bavaro, the tight end. 
McDonald knocked him out of bounds, a 17-yard pickup. Steve Berline really has handled this weather so well. He has not had any exchange problems from the center, and when he's had an opportunity and the time to throw the ball, he's thrown it very well. There he finds his favorite receiver, Mark Rivera, which takes him out of bad field position and puts the pressure now on USC defense. Here's the resting Notre Dame defense. Boy, they have done their job today, Gary. This guy in particular, Klein and Gann, have played extremely well. There's a handoff to Pinkett. Pinkett has another first down. Jerome Tyler knocks him out of bounds. Pinkett just short of the 50-yard line. 11-yard pickup. Well, it looks like Alan Pinkett at some point today is going to get those 100 yards. And Artie Gigantino, the USC defensive coordinator, felt that was the key to the football game. But right now, Notre Dame is winning the battle of the line of scrimmage, both offensively and defensively. We've seen seen the defensive front, in particular, control the USC line. Thus far, 82 yards for Pinkett on 16 carries from the 49. This time, Smith, the fullback. He's into the USC, into the field. Colorado made the stop. Pick up on the play of six. Second down and four. This is an impressive drive here by Notre Dame, too, particularly because they're using the clock. There's only six minutes, or oh, a little bit over six minutes, left here in the third quarter. And remember, Notre, uh, USC is not a great catch-up team. Notre Dame is controlling the ball, the clock, and putting points on the board. And they're doing it with the wind to their back. Ever Carney has kicked both of those field goals with a win at his back. Alan Pinkett, tough sledding this time. He'll be short of the first down. Neil Hope, Dwayne Pickett combining on the stop. USC did not want to lose their last two regular season games and go into New Year's against Ohio State. We talked about the offensive line of Notre Dame, how well they played. Right there in the middle, 63 is the center, Mike Kelly. He's on Colorado. That's a stand up there. But watch some of the other offensive linemen. Mike Perino, number 76, makes a fine block. And they actually, they're just holding that defensive line up and allows Alan Pinkett to use those, that great vision that he had to pick a hole. This is a game where both teams have those mammoth offensive lines. Third down, a yard. Smith the motion. Here comes Pinkett. And Alan Pinkett. We'll have to wait and see. Very difficult to spot any yard markers down there now. It's just water. Well, this is a big this is a big third down play too, and whether to make this first down is critical because we have seen how well that their kicker, John Carney, has kicked here today with the wind at his back. They can make the first down, they can move himself into position to kick another one. It looks like it could be fourth down. Let's see. They're gonna bring the six over to see if he did in fact make it. left here in the third quarter. Is there a game here tomorrow in this Coliseum? The Raiders will be playing here tomorrow. Do you believe the conditions they're going to have? They're playing Indianapolis. Huh? We'll have three more years of this series. You better be careful. Honey now will be Maricola. They did not get the first down. Hit it very high. Fair catch is called for by Tommy Haynes. He's got it at the 17-yard line minutes left after a 25-yard punt. USC trails it 19-7. Freshman last season when he took control of the offense and led the Hurricanes to an 11-1 record, an Orange Bowl upset over Nebraska, and the national championship. An excellent student, majoring in economics and finance. By next fall, he may start courses at Miami School of Law. Bernie Kosar strives to be the best he can be. Today, that's to keep the old pig skin dry. Pretty large responsibility today, isn't it? It really is. USC has the ball, first down. At the 17-yard line, Kennedy Cola grinds it out to the 24. Joe Johnson, Robert Banks combine on the stop. It'll be second down and three. There's the USC defense there with Artie Gigantino, their defensive coordinator. They have to create some turnovers. Notre Dame's defense has done that, as well as the circumstances of the weather. But they're going to have to force the issue, as they have all year long. This defense has carried the Trojans into the Rose Bowl. Second 
second down, three. Four minutes, 28 seconds left in the third quarter. Green to Crutcher, and Crutcher's not going to get the first down. He is felted by Gann. Mike Gann and Wally Klein have, in the second half, dominated defensively. Going to bring up third down and still, well, it's, what, about a yard to go? That's a good look at Mikey, and the thing about Mike is that he can be out of position, but he's got tremendous speed for a big man and can really recover and make a play. The line play in a game like this, with the weather's like this, you have two big physical teams, that's what's going to take. You're going to have to maintain your block as you watch James Fitzpatrick try to tie up the Notre Dame defender there and allow Crutcher to get to the outside. We have a delay right now. Kennedy Pola is going off the field. He's out right now as it's now third down a yard. Crutcher, the set running back. And Crutcher sloshing forward. He has the first down. 4.09 left here in the third quarter. It's important for USC to keep their defense off the field, to keep the pressure on Notre Dame's defense right now. Keep churning out some first downs. They don't necessarily have to make any big plays, but get some first downs, get something on the board here in the third quarter. So the first down with 4.03 left in the third. They expected a crowd around 80,000 today, but... Uh, don't think very many showed up. Looks like it's an invitation-only affair. <laughs> well, they didn't come dressed up for it. Here is Green. Being flushed out. And it's hot. Beautiful. Great job by Hank Norman coming back to the football. How he kept his footing, I don't know. 25-yard completion, and the Trojans are still alive. You know, a lot of people compare Timmy Green to Joe Cap because he's so fiery and emotional. He kind of threw a pass like uh, Joe Cap here today as you watch him kind of scramble around a little bit by himself a little bit more time, but he can't get any, any stuff on the ball. You see a, kind of a wounded duck, but Hank Norman has the presence to come back to the ball. And again, in situations like this, the offensive receiver always has the advantage. He knows where he's going. The defender is at the disadvantage. There's the result, the reception by Norman. Norman with a strong game, a 25-yard completion for the 46 of Notre Dame. Green with some pressure in his face, overthrown. Trying to go up and come down with it was Joe Cormier, the tight end, and even though he's 6'6", he wasn't tall enough to come up with that. You know, that ball would have been intercepted by Pat Ballage, number 40, had not Hiawatha Francisco, number 33, deflected it. There is Ballage, along with Francisco. Seven sophomores starting defensively for Notre Dame. They're a young football team. And if they win this today and head on to the Aloha Bowl, this young football team will maybe have that springboard they've been looking for. They thought they had it after the Liberty Bowl. Started out three and one, then lost three straight at home. Then they've won three in a row. Crutcher. Crutcher close to the first down. Inside the 40 to the 38. Eric Dorsey in there now. Number 71 made the tackle. The USC offensive line is beginning to come to the forefront and actually control the line of scrimmage better than they have in the entire football game. And that's allowing Fred Crocher to find a little running room. Earlier in, the, in this game, we have seen the defensive line of Notre Dame be able to come off blocks and make plays. But right there, the offensive line held their block, allowed Crocher to pick up a big play, a big, well, a big yard. Eight yards to be exact, Pat. Third down and two. It's not that big, I guess, eight yards, is it? It's big in this weather. He's got to get something out of this drive. Two minutes, 24 seconds left in the third quarter. Hola, who's come back into the game. I told you he'd be you back, were right. I? You were absolutely right. He is tough. Those Samoans are tough. They're strong, and uh, they've got great pride. And he's back in again. That will move the sticks. Another first down. The best offensive drive by Southern Cal yet today. The invitation-only crowd here. They're getting into it now. Oh, they are really into it. <laughs> well, I guess it, it makes no difference. When it's raining this hard, you might as well take off your shirt. Well, it's a little chilly, though, isn't it? <laughs> Two minutes, eight seconds left. Third quarter. First down, just short of the 35. Green to 
Crutcher, and Crutcher gets three on the play. It'll be second and seven. Tony Perjanic, number 58, outstanding sophomore linebacker who's been out five games with a knee. Make that stop. He was a leading tackler last year as a freshman. Remember he and Kovaleski starting as freshman? We call him kind of a typical Notre Dame linebacker. They liken him to what, Bob Crable? Yep. Second down eight. Griffin comes back in at nose guard. Eric Dorsey will leave. And there's our guys staying with us up there, the Goodyear blimp. They're dry up there at least, right? Green. Complete to Boyer, and Ballage is there, but the pickup will go to the 30-yard line. They'll be four yards short of the first down. Green kind of had a funny motion on that pass. Well, you do anything you can in this kind of weather. He did throw that one a little bit sidearm, but he got the ball to Mike Boyer. We're going to get a look at the motion by Tim Green. Pretty good protection. Did throw a little bit sidearm. Didn't, couldn't get, you can't get much steam on the ball. It's just it's so heavy and it's so slick that he's throwing high percentage passes. It's going to be three yards short of the first down. Third down and three. Just inside the 30-yard line. 40 seconds left in the third quarter. Now, remember, USC will have the wind to the back. That would be something to think about if they want to end up going for a field goal at this quarter ends before they have the attempt. Structure bobbles it. Notre Dame's got it. A there is flag. a penalty flag. Let's check that out. Greg Denjams, number 92, got on it. Holding, so it will be Notre Dame's football. Well, this is the fifth turnover by Southern Cal. Exactly what has happened against LSU when they lost and what happened against UCLA when they lost. The, the pitch was the crutch and the ball was right there. He did just bobble it, and then he just can't get on it. They were trying to run into the short side, into the boundary, where the conditions are a little bit better. But look how many white shirts are around the ball. Even if he had caught the pitch, I don't think he would have picked up the first down. But more importantly, they lost a chance at at least a field goal. And with 27 seconds, Notre Dame has it with a 19-7 lead. And Kennedy Pola, who was leading that team by example, have to wait for another opportunity. Mark checked that Chris Smith, the fullback. Out across the 40 to the 41. And Tyler made the stop again a nine. A good look at Tony Fujanic and some of his friends on defense who created their fifth turnover. You know, USC's offensive team is just not quite good enough to overcome as many mistakes as they've had uh, as they have today and they did last week. Well, that's going to be the end of our third quarter. It's been all Notre Dame with two field goals in the third quarter. We'll return after this commercial break and a word from your local station. The ball in his hands with 28 seconds, and he marched his team down with only five, five seconds when he took the snap from center. He's got a guardian angel on his shoulder or something, Gary. This ball was in the air 63 yards. He released it with one second on the clock. Gerard Phelan, number 20, had gotten behind the prevent defense of Miami. And I'll tell you what, there was some celebration down in Miami last night. Doug Flutie pulling it out, and what a career he's had, and he'll be in the Cotton Bowl, and of course that'll be broadcast here on CBS. That looks like World War III. Look at that. 4th quarter, second down, a yard to go for Notre Dame. Chris Smith going for the first down. Let's go now to New York and let's kind of untangle what's going to happen as far as the champion of the Southwest Conference is concerned. All right, Gary, we'll try. It's a four-way tie at the top now of the Southwest Conference. Arkansas, Houston, SMU, Texas. Here's why. Texas upended by Baylor today, 24 to 10. TCU is out of the race, 35-21. The Aggies upset them. Houston beat Texas Tech, 24 to 17. So the Arkansas SMU game tonight takes on some importance. Let's go back to you. Boy, Ken Hatfield has done a great job in his first year at Arkansas. And they're still in that bowl picture. Well, he did a nice job at Air Force, too, didn't he? Didn't he? That was a first down run by Smith. Burline giving to Pinkett, and he's drilled backwards. Very aggressive play that time by Rex Moore. Moore is fired up. A while ago, he did something that he wished had not been put on That's camera, right. but uh, he is fired up. His brother played at Stanford. He's a fullback. Out of Orange, California. I think his mother saw him put that mud in Pinkett's face. <laughs> if she didn't, she'll hear about it. <laughs> 
Second down, 10. No gain on that play. They had 66,342 tickets sold for this game. 51,014 showed up early. And now you guess how Most many are still early. here. <laughs> Most of them left early, too. <laughs> Can't blame them, can you? Pinkett looking for some running room. And he's to the 45, a gain of two. Colorado and Pickett making the tackle. Sets up a third and long situation for Notre Dame's offense. Again, and one more time, the, the USC defense is going to have to find a way to stop Steve Berline, who's actually thrown the ball pretty well today, and give Tim Green and the offense an opportunity to get down and score some points. Berline, who's from the Anaheim area, played at Survey Servite High School. Coming back here, and of course, very important game for him. But I bet he didn't figure he'd come back in the Coliseum and play under these kind of weather conditions. Boy, I tell you, not only has he played well today, but he plays almost in a fog. He's played well this entire year, much better than he did as a freshman. Think it again on the third down and eight, and got three, and that's all. They're going to have to punt the football. Rex Moore there again to make the stop. You know, it's interesting, Burline, Pat, he's wearing number seven. That's the number that, of course, Joe Theismann wore. And what they do at Notre Dame, every time they give an incoming freshman a jersey, they also give them a card showing them the players that have worn that number preceding that. You know, I hadn't heard it. That is a great story. And I guess it puts a little pressure on the guys as well. But kind of a, with the tradition you have at Notre Dame, it's kind of fun. I like to see some other schools do that as well. Telling Ted Toner that story, he says, that's a great idea. I ought to do that too, because USC has that same lineage, that same legacy. After Veracoma, and they almost got it. They may have gotten a piece of it. And they got him. Yes, they did. We're going to have a roughing the kicker. I couldn't see the flag. There's so much water down there. I think it was this guy, Rex Moore, that roughed him. Here's Veracola. Southern Cal is trying to do anything they can to create a turnover or a big play. He runs right into Veracola. The official's right there. Rex Moore, number 35. The official has, has a little difficulty, as you mentioned, getting the flag out of his pocket. But he's there to make the call. Had he touched the ball and blocked it at all, it would not have been a roughing the punter penalty, but he didn't. Has not been a good day for this guy. And so it will give them the first down. Roughing the kicker. Defense. First down. And so instead of having the football, USC still out there defensively. 12-12 left in the game. Remember now, Notre Dame trying to win for the first time in 18 years here in the Coliseum. They'd win, it'd be two in a row after winning last year at South Bend. They don't need the green jerseys today, do they? Burline. And that's deflected. Is Steve Davis still there? He may have deserted like the rest of the fans. Oh, it is really bad down here, Gary. This is Father Reilly. He's the chaplain of the Notre Dame football team, and he's been around since 1966 in that capacity. Father Reilly, how has Jerry taken all the pressure? He's been under a lot of pressure. How has he responded to it all? I think he's responded very well, Steve. He seems to be uh, uh, handling it good without any... Uh, oh, I'm sure it bothers him. There's no question about it because he doesn't like to lose. He's a competitor. But I think he really has kind of looked at it, and he says, I'm going to do the very best I possibly can can and hope that the team will do that and then we'll see what happens and i think that's the only way you can look at it a uh, win's going to help a lot uh, let's go back upstairs that's right thank you steve as uh, pinkett on a second down 10 picks up two more on the stop along with del rio well that will relieve some pressure if the irish hang on to this and we talked to faust he says i will never quit i uh, feel very strongly about this football team he talked it over with his family of course, that decision uh, may not even come up now, the game like they're playing today. On the other hand, the other side of the coin, the pressure is back on Ted Tolner a little bit. Yep. Sometimes you can forget what a successful year that he has had. He won seven conference games in a row, but he hasn't beaten his two arch rivals since he's been at, at Southern Cal, and that's Notre Dame and UCLA. Jerry Faust said, I'm not going to quit and let somebody else come in and inherit this football team and take over, pick up where I've left off. Here's Burline, and he is in trouble. Gets rid of it, and it's incomplete, and I don't believe that Rex Moore saw the football. It was headed towards him. Chris Smith, the intended receiver. Burline just diverted a long loss. So on fourth down, Viracola will punt again. 
And this guy, Haynes, will go back. We haven't seen Darrell Hopper since the start of the game, who usually fields the punts. He was hurt in that first series. Miracola, in, in these kind of situations, every punter has to be concerned because you know the other team is thinking about a block. However, this time USC doesn't have anybody up there. They usually get 10 men up. They're not even really putting that much pressure on. And he shanks that one off the side of his foot. And it's going to be marked at the 17-yard line. USC has it, a 19-yard punt. At Ryan Knight in, who is their fastest tailback and their big play guy, but well, they have not gotten the ball much to Timmy Ware, their fastest receiver, number 19. Perhaps a couple of short passes to Ware, let him try to break some uh, tackles and get make a big play out of it. Stay with us. Let's see if Green and company can pull this one out somehow. He's going deep. Norman is there. And double coverage at the 35. Valage and Francisco, and Norman wanted some help. And Green is upset, and I don't know who he's upset at, but he is upset. I believe he's probably upset at one of the officials. There you see number 79, Jeff Regal, trying to settle him down. Here's 83, Hank Norman. He's got a height advantage on most defensive backs. He is 6'4". The ball is pretty well thrown under the circumstances, but good defense there by the secondary. It was not interference. Did not knock him before the ball was there. And the reaction of Tim Green, the emotional leader of Southern Cal. He's just trying out there to make something to happen, trying to get a little help from the officials. All the games that we've seen him play, I think this is still his strongest game. Here comes Ryan Knight. Knight out to the 25-yard line. It'll be a gain of five on the play. Ryan Knight has that ability to make the big play, the cutback. Well, Excellent against the grain. And that's what they're going to need here to get back in this game. Ryan Knight to break a big play or to get the ball to Timmy Ware, number 19, who has not caught a pass yet today. Remember the exchange problems early in the game between Timmy Green and the center? There you saw Tim Green actually stay underneath the center a little bit longer so he can secure the set snap from Cox and then get the ball to Knight. Third down and five now for the Trojans. The wind to their back. You know, I don't think it's raining quite as hard it's lightened up a little bit Cormier comes in motion Green has Cormier but it's behind him Joe Johnson 27 defending on the play and that's going to bring up a fourth down Joe Cormier number 85 he's coming in motion right at you now he has, was open for the first down but Tim Green threw the ball a little bit behind him and under these weather conditions, you can't really make the adjustment. Cormier at number 85 is trying to turn back in, in and make the catch, but it was difficult to get his footing. Richardson will punt from the 10-yard line. Two men back, Pat Cusick and Joe Howard for the Fighting Irish at the 10-16 mark. 19-7. Notre Dame with the lead. Last time, Richardson had an excellent punt, and he hits this one a little bit wobbly. And it's going to be blown dead. Now, where's it going to go out of bounds? The 45, the USC 45, I believe. That will be a 21-yard punt. And so the USC defense has got to get the turnover at the 10:09 mark when we return. It's been the turnovers. If they lose this one today, all three of those games have had five turnovers. It's been the opposition, too, has been opportunistic. They've turned those turnovers into points. Notre Dame has the football now at the 50-yard line. 10:09 left in this game. Here's Pickett, and there's the defense. In particular, Brian Luff, number 90. Del Rio, number 52. No gain on the play. It really might have been advantage for Notre Dame to have played in some bad weather this year. We talked about that. Steve Davis mentioned they played in, what, six or seven games in bad weather. But you haven't seen any of the exchange problems between center and quarterback and between quarterback and halfback that has plagued USC today. The second down, 11. They actually lost a yard on that play. Ono has now come in for USC. The Dick Buckus lookalike. He wears the crew cut. He is number 56 for USC in that inside linebacking spot. They give him a bad time about that. Erlang taking a lot of time. Pitch it to Pinkett, and Pinkett across the 45. A gain of two, and the man we just talked about, Ono, 56, is over there to make the tackle. It's going to be third down coming up. Ono also snaps. He is the sophomore out of Santa Monica. Let's take a look at number 52, Jack Del Rio. He's at the top of the screen. They're going to run right at him. Number 82, Bavaro, kind of knocks him out and creates the lane there for Pinkett. But Bavaro did a nice job on Del Rio, knocked him out, and just allowed Pinkett to run inside the block. Your 
Jerome Tyler now is uh, helped off. There's the uh, Lombardi finalists, and of course Del Rio is one of those. The refrigerator, William Perry is in there, Bill Freilich, and Tony DeGrate. Well, you just can't get over Texas getting beat today. Junior Thurman now has come in replacing Tyler, who is helping the field. Third down and three. They need a stop and they got it. That's Luft again, playing a strong game. It brings up fourth down. Well, the USC defense has done their job. Now it's up to Tim Green and his offense, and really to get something going here with 8.33 left in the fourth. Luft, we mentioned at the top of this broadcast, is playing his best football. He's a senior out of Fresno. Barracola, back to punt. He's got a 10-man rush looking at him here again. 8.15 as Barracola steps back at his own 40-yard line. That snap, a bounce once, but he fields it well. And that ball is going to roll inside the 20, just inside the 20. And so Tim Green, after that 25-yard punt, has eight minutes, eight minutes to pull this one out. The Irish leading 19-7 with a 19-7 lead. Irish at halftime led 13-7. <laughs> and Pat, I'm wondering, those teams you had yesterday, Miami and BC, they had so much offense, but you wonder if they could have done that in this kind of condition. Or, or if this game had been played yesterday, perhaps. It yep. might have been a different ball game at this point. USC is very much in position to win. But here again, we've mentioned Timmy Ware, number 19. I mean, he is their big play receiver for Southern Cal. He has yet to catch a pass today. He is split out at the bottom of the screen. Green with eight minutes to work. And there's the man you just talked about. Where sliding, trying somehow to come up with it. Joe Johnson defending on the play. Where has been the big play guy? He's a track man. He's run the 100-yard dash in 9-7. And USC realizes they have to get the ball to Timmy Ware, and they're trying to. He has his man beaten, but the ball was thrown low by Tim Green. If he could have caught that ball in between a seam and then dodged Francisco, number 33, he might have seen six points. But that seems to be the plan of action right now to get 19 deep. On second down, Ryan Knight. And Ryan Knight gets the gain of four coming out to the 24-yard line. Tony Furjanic making the stop. They had talked about, had Green not played well early in this game, they might go to Kevin McLean, a sophomore, who figures very prominently next year in their quarterback plans. The fact USC has Sean Salisbury back. They have uh, Rodney Peake, a freshman who they've redshirted, and also McLean next year. So they're going to have some intense competition for that spot. They get Ryan Knight, the man we're watching run the ball today, who has the capability of going the distance. So he's going to add some excitement to the offense. Third down now. Six yards to go. They need a completion. And Green's going to scramble. He's got the first down. He's across the 40 to the 45 to the 46. Mike Haywood made the stop, and Green just went 22 yards. He hasn't given up. You're absolutely right. Timmy Green is going to try to beat you any way he can. And he's thrown the ball very well today, and now he's going to find an open lane. He knows precisely what it's going to take to bring his team back. He knows where the first down marker is. And to show you the kind of guy he is, he's, tr again, trying to run over defenders, even after he knew he had the first down. Tim Green, he is quite a competitor. They list him at 6-1. That might be pushing it a little bit. He's closer to 6. What is it about USC quarterbacks? They always give you a misread on the uh, height. No, you know, Green said he's taller than I, and I kind of resent that. I'm not so sure he is. <laughs> the 22-yard gain sets it up at the 47. 6.40 left in the game. Green over the top. Kennedy Paula again, and the Bruiser has another first down at the 37, and now they're starting to have something happen. 16-yard pickup. Well, you're right, but every time USC has ha had started something, they've turned the ball over, but here they cannot afford any more turnovers. But another look at Kennedy Pola as he catches his fifth pass here today. Again, they went downfield a couple times deep, and then they let the linebackers drop deep and dump the ball over to Kennedy Pola. I tell you, he's a dangerous man after he catches the ball, isn't he? He is something to tackle. That is his fourth catch of the game for 48 yards. First down, 6-23. Timeouts left for USC. Green. And almost caught Cormier trying to make the diving catch at the 25-yard line. 
All right, let's check some scores now. BYU finishes unbeaten the Holiday Bowl coming up for them. Oh, Oklahoma, that's in the snake pit of Norman, leading the Cowboys of Oklahoma State and Baylor upsetting that Texas. Is. Mm. And South Carolina won in Death Valley. We've been there, Pat. You know how tough that is. Remember this one? Gosh, I'll always remember that one. And a and has beaten TCU. Another surprise in the Southwest Conference. Well, that'll help Jackie Carroll's situation. A lot of pressure on him. Here is Green, and it's almost intercepted by Ballage. Pat Ballage had it for a moment. Hank Norman was the intended receiver. Bobby Ross and the Maryland Terrapins had an exciting year, and they just won the ACC title today, defeating Virginia 45-34. And that is the matchup from the Sun Bowl, Tennessee, Maryland. And Virginia will go to the Peach Bowl, as George Welch has done an outstanding job for the Cavaliers against Jim Everett and the Purdue Boilermakers. Excellent matchup. Third down now and 10. And we've got the stoppage of the clock. All kinds of mix-up. I cannot spot the flags anymore. They disappear <laughs> in the water out there. Timmy Green went right up to the official and began to argue with him. A legal procedure. He's going to lose that argument. Most times you do when you <laughs> argue with the official. Tim Green, he set everything off last week by telling UCLA what he's going to do. Dead ball. Illegal procedure. Offense. Still third down. And with six minutes, one second left. That's how much time is between Notre Dame and their first win here in the Coliseum since 1966. USC needs two touchdowns, so a field goal in any, any situation here is not going to do them any good. On a third and 15, Green trying to keep this going. He's going to try to run it. And nothing going to happen. The ball is loose. Down on the field is Berjanic, but I believe Green may have gotten it back. Boy, that's the scrapping guy, number 11. And he's discussing it with Notre Dame. I don't think I ever saw you do that, <laughs> discuss things with the opposing team like that. You're absolutely right. I was, they were much larger than I. <laughs> Fourth and 21. Here's another look at the end of the play by Tim Green, a gutsy quarterback. Look, looks like he almost had his face mask grabbed there. The ball comes loose. And the Trojans did end up recovering, but they're forced to punt the football right back to Notre Dame. And so Richardson will do that as Howard and Cusack go back 5-11. They need a break. The Trojans do. That ball is going to splice down to the nine, and that's as far as it goes right there. Notre Dame has it. 5-0-1 left. The Irish with a 19-7 lead. Great performers in the past. Here's one of them. O.J. Simpson. In 1967, 150 yards as the Trojans won that one. And look at this one. Marcus Allen, another Heisman Trophy winner. 147 yards in 1981. He didn't play in this series that often. He was hurt a lot. But he had a big day there as USC won it 14-7 minutes left. USC with a 19-7 lead. Should say Notre Dame with a 19-7 lead. And inside the 10, they pick up a yard. Up to the defense again, and here's what the defense has to do is not only surround the ball carrier, but once the extra defenders get there, strip the ball. They have to come up and try to force the turnover as the Notre Dame defense has today. As you look at the Notre Dame defense, boy, they have been absolutely outstanding. Pickett, by the way, has 94 yards, so he's approaching another 100-yard day. If he would get that, it'd be five in a row. Pickett will be back. Erline will be back. That defense, as we mentioned, has most of their people back next year. Here is Chris Smith. Smith out across the 10 to the 12-yard line. Neil Hope made the stop. And with 4-11, Notre Dame is in no hurry right now. Well, we checked some of the scores and a couple of the upsets in the Southwest Conference. Houston, Bill Yeomans had a good year for the Cougars, and North Carolina defeated Duke. Kentucky over Tennessee. Mississippi, Mississippi State, that's always a war down there in Ole Miss. And Pitt 
has wow. salvaged a very disappointing year. Moj Fazio has had a long season. That's got to salve some wounds. On a third down, Luff comes storming through on Chris Smith, the fullback. And we have another penalty flag. I want to tell you, the SC defense still believes they're in this, they're, this football game. They're going to do everything they can to show that watch Chris Smith, a hit that he is going to take right there. There's just nowhere to go. And that's the kind of defense they've played. It's even the off offensive turnovers that have really been the story. Luff has played well, Pat. He's played all day like this. There he is. Had a big sack on Burline earlier in the game. And that's what uh, the coaches are saying, that uh, he put his best football together down the stretch. Now here we have seen USC come close to blocking punts by Notre Dame. Remember the bad snap last time they tried to punt too, Gary? Dead ball. Personal foul. Offense. Fourth down. Yet another Ready personal down, foul. Right? And now Vera Cole is going to have to back as far as he can in that end zone to punt it out of there. On a fourth down. Looks like a 10-man rush again. Tommy Haynes is back, but he's hoping the ball doesn't get that far. A block here with 3.19. They're letting the clock run. They're taking their time. And the rush. He just got it underway. And that ball just <laughs> did stop right there. Right into the beach. Yeah. <laughs> right. Brian Luff almost blocked that. It was a 29-yard punt. And with 3.04, USC's got it. Next Saturday, Army-Navy from number one. The ball, Green never saw it. It came out of there. He turned around, couldn't locate it. USC recovered it. That's the fourth bad exchange between Tom Cox and Tim Green. Now, isn't it interesting because Notre Dame took all the criticism early in the year for bad exchanges between the quarterback and center. Another look at Tim Green. The ball is just so sloppy now. It went right through his leg that never touched Tim Green's hands, and then he's just trying to trying to find it. But one of the offensive men there, Tom Cox, who knew the ball was fumbled, he recovered the ball. Loss on the play, second down, 14. Hold of the only running back, Green. Mike Gann giving chase, and he kind of... <laughs> that one the Kennedy Pola. Exactly what he did. He did shot put it. Ron Weisenhofer over to make the stop. Number 36 for Notre Dame. So with 218, let's check some other scores. Ooh, Louisiana Tech in the Division One AA playoffs. They scored some points. Middle Tennessee over Eastern Kentucky. And the Terriers of Boston losing to Richmond 35-33. The Moccasins of Tennessee, Chattanooga, hey. losing to Arkansas State. I am impressed. I really am. <laughs> okay. We have a timeout called by USC. To less than ideal conditions, and in particular, the Goodyear blimp and our Captain Dick Esch, along with his cameraman, Ken Wu. Those guys have been up there. There's been times I'm not sure they could see the field from where they are. 2.18 left in the game. Third down and three. USC had used a timeout. Ryan Knight trying to get the first down. He's close to it. Pat, we want to also take this opportunity to give a get well greeting to CBS maintenance man John Hawthorne, who was injured this morning, getting ready for this broadcast. He broke his wrist. Just hope he'll be back, and we know he's watching the game today. Dead Toner still hanging in there. It's 159. Let's see. It's going to be fourth down and still a yard to go. Jimmy Green's learning a few things today. He's bounced back from a bad game last week against UCLA. He's been a competitor and fought all day long. Well, they're not going to have that momentum going into the game against Ohio State, but they do have Tim Green back to where they wanted him, where he was in that Washington game. He's uh, recaptured some of that stability that they wanted so badly. What's Faust upset here about? He may have thought that, uh, I don't know, it's going to be short of the first down. It's fourth down. If you believe in miracles, and we saw one last night with Doug Flutie, <laughs> USC needs to make this first down, and they get the ball in the end zone. It's easy to do. See, then they kick an onside kick, Gary. Then they throw a long pass for another touchdown. Nothing to it. Nothing to it. Nothing to it. 
We've talked about pressure. Jerry Faust has had it. Boge Basio's had it. He won today. today. Boge Basio did. So did Ray Jackie Sherrill. At Alabama, Jackie Sherrill. And the coach is uh, getting some relief today in this final game. And there's a mishandled tap again. Notre Dame's got it. Well, there goes your whole scenario to win this <laughs> game, Pat. Well, the difference today has been the ability of Steve Berline to handle snaps from center. And in the opposition, Tim Green not being able to do that. What is that, six turnovers? Six turnovers, and I think this is the fifth exchange problem between Tom Cox and Tim Green. One more look at the exchange problem. Just never quite got his hands on it. Tries his best to get back to it and on a fourth down. There's Notre Dame to make their sixth turnover recovery. Robert Banks, 56, who came up with it. They had six turnovers. Oh, they're not going to record that as a turnover, Pat, because it was a fourth down. Aha. Uh -huh. So it was just five. Here is Pinkett. Alan Pinkett coming close to 100 yards now. He may get it yet before this day is over. That was Hope on the stop, but now some pushing and shoving going on. And um, I would think that you had a short fuse this kind of day, weather-wise, would, uh, would make it even shorter. Well, the USC defense has been a little bit frustrated. They came in wanting to shut Alan Pinkett down. He did almost get his 100 yards. He has 98 yards right now. That last carry gave him 98. He's carried the ball 27 times. 126 left in this game. Second down, six. Hope that's a waterproof watch. <laughs> so it's going to bring up with now the clock running, 110 left on a second down. Here is the fullback, Mark Brooks, who played for Jerry Faust at Moeller High School in Cincinnati. Again, uh, some shoving. Notre Dame to win here for the first time since 1966. They'll be seven and four. They're going to head west. Just keep flying over the Pacific Ocean into the island of Hawaii, Oahu, and they're going to get to play in the Aloha Bowl. Some very excited young men, and Jerry Faust has to be very, very happy with this team. He's battled an awful lot of pressure this year. It'll be but four in a row. After that very tough start he had, being three and four. these seniors have had that positive notch in history that Jerry Faust wanted so much for this team to have. Uh, he said he wanted to show what these kids are made of. He said that improve outside what we believe inside. This is a team of character. And they're starting to celebrate. What a win for Coach Faust and Notre Dame. First down at the 40. First down run by Brooks. Timeout is called by USC. Defensive tackles, Wally Klein and Mike Gann. Klein with five solos, Gann with seven solos. And for USC, Brian Luff, he had five tackles for losses and eight solos. So the defensive guys on a wet, soggy day are the MVPs and $1,000 to be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of both schools. Time running down. The Irish are going to win it. It's been 18 years, and Jerry Faust and the Irish have beaten history. Faust, who has all the momentum going with Omaha Bowl. Ted Toner has to get his group together for the Rose Bowl and get some of that momentum started that he was so concerned about at the top of the day. And a tough, tough assignment against Ohio State. And so the Irish, who came out here early Wednesday so they can enjoy the good weather. <laughs> they did have good weather, of course, until today. Now Steve Davis is on the sideline. And uh, let's join him. See? Hey, boo -boo. <laughs> Here's Jerry Fast on the field. Here comes. November's not been very pleasant, but it was great today. Well, we had a good last three games. We played very well. We got healthy. 
the last four games of the season, and it, we, were, we had almost our whole team out here today. I'm really happy for the kids. They've worked hard. They got a lot of character. They got a lot of desire. They had a lot of diversity in the middle of the year there. They hung together as a team, and, and they played well. And anybody can play in sunny California like this. I tell you, I'm really, I'm really proud of you. And this team will go down. Their first team in 18 years has won out here, and they deserve it because they're a great group of young men. After you beat LSU, you said that was the turnaround of the season. Was that what's happened? Well, as soon as we got out, yeah, they, those kids really hung in there that week. We played well against South Carolina and had some bad bounces, and the kids came back down there in that heat and everything and uh, just did a heck of a job, and I'm proud of them. I'm really proud of them. Jerry, this is the back page of your uh, little uh, brochure you gave me. He said, this thing can be remembered. Let's go upstairs. Thank you. 19-7. to 7. The Irish have won it. It was Pinkett with 98 yards. Carney with two 45-yard field goals and the five turnovers by USC. We want to thank the people who have been so very... Rapidly closing.